Um, yeah, so on top of all those things to show up on game day at your best, they're traveling here from Europe while on a cut. Now, my opinion, maybe Nancy will agree or not, whether a cut's two pounds or 20 pounds, it always sucks. Yes. Yeah. I, I'm at a point in my life where I'd rather travel earlier, which sucks because I like to spend a few days after the competition enjoying the place I traveled to, but now I choose to travel earlier, yeah. try to do my sightseeing while I'm recovering, getting that walking around, refeeding, yep. get that blood flow. Regardless, it sucks as you get older. Yes. I mean, uh, we have a lot of guys out here that have opted to permanently move from the 80 kilogram to 90 kilogram class, which is relatively new in the last five-ish years. Yeah. It's given a lot of guys a chance to move on from a weight class where they were forced to really, really, really cut down. Yeah. All right, Chandler. Okay. Oh, that was good. Chandler has a pretty wide stance for a conventional pull. Some guys With are opting sleeves. for that. Some athletes have the very classic narrow stance. Uh, how do you do? You pull narrow? Do you pull what? How do? You, or are you kind of in the middle? I definitely pull more narrow. Okay. Yeah. In theory, on paper, that helps create more torque and power off the floor. But sometimes you just gotta you gotta get it off the floor. Yeah. I feel like I can align my pressure through my body. Yes. A lot more strategically that way. Yeah. What I also like to tell people about strongman is there's only about one or two steadfast all-time rules and everything else is prison style. It's either going from the ground to your hip, from the ground overhead, or from the ground onto something. Or from left to right. Yeah, I mean, until you come into a belt clean, controversial Guys, let the debate. record show that Cody Abel is very pro belt clean. I'm pro whatever that show allows. That's fair. There, you know what? That's fair. That's Whatever how I the stand. promoter says, follow the rules. And sometimes decisions are made last minute in for safety. Yeah. I know that upsets people, but we always need to look at safety because this is a dangerous sport at the end of the day. Yeah. Well, it can be. All right. Who we have coming out now? Josh Wendler's is back again. up. About 290 kilograms. Okay. Here we go. Finish. All right. Got it just off the ground a bit. Good fight for Josh. As you can see, we have that Cerberus Strength banner right behind. They have sponsored this deadlift event for us, so we're using the Cerberus deadlift bars. A lot of Cerberus gear out here today. You're going to see a lot of the athletes actually rocking some Cerberus sleeves. The figure eights you're seeing out there, a lot of them look like they're Cerberus. I actually have Cerberus lingerie at home. What is that? That's not a thing. It's a thing now. Thanks. Cerberus. I have questions. I have a nice bustier from Cerberus. I don't believe All you. Right. Looks like we had a, our, our first 300 Cherry. kilogram Keith Cherry. Which makes that six. RPE, cup of coffee, let's go. Easy does it. That was 661 in go. pounds. And that's his opening lift. That was a good opener. Yeah, that was a great opener. This is probably gonna be our longest event, not gonna lie to you. Max, Max events, events do take a while. Whether it's one weight class or 10, it's always gonna be the longest. Ideally, it can be, it's more than to be an event for the test of strength. I think a max event is supposed to be where you let the athletes really showcase some just sheer static strength. Yes. We had another 300 kg deadlift fall. I do appreciate when there's a three mat, three attempt max, so that we're not just here all day. No. People will spend all their energy here all and then it. not save any for the I other I am not a fan events. of last man standing max events anymore. Local shows, I feel like it's okay. Yeah, because it's at a lot bigger shows, of an athlete. Yes, yeah. and you start much lighter, so it's yeah. a little bit safer. Yeah. But to have people, quote unquote, shooting their shot way too early. Yeah. We do not have a deadlift jack out there. That's going to get fun. So we have Bobby Thompson sitting out front as our head judge today. He is the oh American nightmare. Yeah. I don't even know where to start with his credentials. Yeah, they are they are long and illustrious. What, he's Much at, like his beard. Yep, he's usually at 
the Rogue, the Arnold, the Shaw. If there is a YouTube compilation of strongmen doing really heavy lifts, he's going to be in it. Absolutely. Or he might be the whole clip. Is this coming? No. This is Coddle. Yeah, no. this is Chandler. 297. Very nice. I would even call his style sort of a conventional sumo it's hybrid. It's almost event. sumo. Got some resemblance to some Vicky Long energy. The queen. Oh, Vicky does almost... It almost that is sumo. a sumo snatch grip deadlift but situation. But just the way it works for her, you can it's tell perfect. that that leverage is so perfect. perfect. And that's the crazy thing. Yeah. Some tall gentleman was talking to me in the gym the other day, like, nah, close to eight feet tall. And he's asked me about his last deadlift. And I'm like, well, I need to see the one before because our leverages Not are same. nowhere comparable. No. So I can't help you if I don't know what good looks like. Yeah. There's principle and then there's practice. And the answer is usually somewhere in the middle. I like that. All right, so we have five reds. We are yellow. at 309 kilograms. Yeah. It's moving too fast for me to count it. Yeah, we are blazing through these attempts. Oh, Fantastic. we have a croissant coming out, as you call them. I didn't say that. You said that. You called them a croissant. No, I, I don't even All Canadians about. are croissants. I, I own that. I said that the French invented democracy and that we should be grateful, and you're a liar. All right, so we got champagne uh, taking 309. PA champagne, 309 kilograms. Yeah. There we go. I was about to say, I don't think this is going to be very long for him. And with an extra long look. You know, the thing about all of these guys is they're, they were very well prepared for this deadlift. Okay, there seems to be attempt. some confusion. He might have jumped the start call. Okay, yeah. He's apparently... Is his he, suit coming off? He, okay, so right. we're doing up and down commands. I believe he jumped the start command, so... Bobby Thompson, the American Nightmare, our head judge, decided that was not within the rules, which is fair. It is fair. Everybody's got to go by the go. same rules. Yep. That's yep. how Pro Strongman League would get a bad rep, and we absolutely don't want that. We want all fairness. I just want the audience to notice that we're getting so heavy that the deadlift jack stand is having issue getting pulled up. And I know those two loaders, they are very strong. They are. They're having a hard time. They are. These guys are at Nationals every year, OSG every year. Yep. We have... Literally, one of the strongest volunteers. This is probably the I've best, the strongest. Yeah, absolutely the strongest volunteers. Actually, staff. I, I gotta say the one at the Shaw Classic was probably the best I've ever been a part of. That one was just insane. And that show, I mean, you can't even yeah, load your own uh, warm-up weights. People are telling you not to touch yeah. stuff. That's just incredible. All right, so we're up to six red plates, so 320 kilograms for. This is is this Mitchell? No. This is Mitchell. Okay. All right, 320. All right, if you guys are noticing, they're getting strapped in. They're getting really tight. Some of these suits, oh, actually, wow. you can tell some of the suits are just strap over the back, and then some of the guys have these strings hanging down at their sides because they can tighten in all the way from what your upper rib cage down to your lower thigh on the outside. Kind of like a corset. Oh, yep. I only have like a singlet style one. I haven't tried any of the more corset. Oh. Nick O'Hare, ladies and gentlemen. A titan of the 90 kilo class. You know, he actually just won the Cost Classic yep. 2023 just in July. So. Yep. Whoa! Wow. That looked like the DeLorean hitting 88 miles an hour going back in time, guys. I just wonder what it feels like for him to go to 90 kilogram shows back to back. Especially because this is only really chaos like, was in July. July. Okay. Yeah. I would say I would put that. This oh, I'm sorry. He took second. I, second. I misspoke. At the mo at the most stacked non-American. Absolutely. Yeah. Um. I would say the timeline between now and chaos is the bare minimum of like the green zone, of like this would be the soonest you'd want to do another show. Yes. Yes. It's almost like three to four months. Yeah. Right. I mean, That's, it's depending on who months. you ask. I, I, in a, for shows that matter, I would say, yeah, three to four months. All right, this is his third attempt, I believe. That is not Chandler. We, that is... Oh, all right. All right, going for 320. Mark Cummins. There we go. This is actually his second attempt. Okay. Ooh, that was good. So to me, the effort of that looked like a second attempt. 
had to do it, yes. had to work for it, but it looks like he's got a little bit left that he can swing for another one. It's tough. I, I normally pick my first one anywhere between 70 and 80 percent, but then that second one, I try to go for like 90, 95, yeah. but sometimes that's just the hardest call, especially if you're used to going pounds, and now you have all these American guys working off kilograms yep. today, so they might be a little thrown off by the different jumps you know yeah. you can't jump by fives when it's also where are you at as an athlete in comparison to the field there are days and times as an athlete where you can you have to literally just run your own race where it's like these are going to be my three attempts because that's what i, I can yes. do and then there's times for other people that are either either have more talent or more experienced or at a different place in their career where they will literally base every decision off what the field is doing because they're just in a different place athletically i can't do that I don't care if there's, there's about a... three people on the planet that can do that. You'll be there in about a week. See, I don't care if there's a deadlift specialist doing work out there. Yeah. I know I need to do specific things to last all day long. Yes. And I'm more focused about being well rounded the across the board. It. Yeah. Because you shoot your shot too early in the day and then you possibly lose the whole show because you focus on one event. I would say normally I would have a slight disagreement with that. I will say, however, a true max I should say it's suited strapped deadlift attempt. If it goes wrong and you're a high level, strong athlete, a lot can happen in a bad way. Oh yes. Yeah. Especially if we're talking about a show like this, Yes. you're in such a stats class. Whereas at a local show, you completely bomb an event. It might not even matter. Yes. All right. Chandler strapping in. All right. This is his third attempt. So this is his last, last pull. Oh, if that bar goes down just the slightest, yep. he loses it. Yeah. That's so, very true in powerlifting and strongman. If the bar starts to descend again, it's over. It doesn't matter if you still lock it out. It's usually over. Yeah. So in my experience, I'd love to hear your input on this. People that pull conventional, but they pull a little wider, their sticking point tends to be right around the base of the knee. Whether that is oh. like self-selection, maybe. I. I don't know, but I feel like everyone I know that pulls a little wide, they get stuck around the knee. Yes. I feel like people that are more narrow get stuck around mid-shin yes. sometimes. Yeah. Or like right when it comes off the ground. And yeah. I've noticed that if you can fight through that, it's one of those, ah, if I can get past my shin, yes. I've got this. Yep. Kind of like when you've got a heavy overhead and you're like, oh, if I can clean it, I know I've got it. Yes. I know I've got the momentum the power to, to get throw it, it. Yep. Did you know that Bobby Thompson does not clean and jerk like do any kind of jump in any press because of the screws in his feet? I mean, I know that he extensively strict presses everything. Right? Yeah. I always thought that was by choice. That is specifically because of the way his feet are. He cannot do that The triple hop. extension of yeah. his ankles? Yeah. Oh, wow. Isn't that crazy? That's and insane. And he's perfected it so well. Like yep. People love to see what Bobby does. Yeah. That is fantastic. Oh, he's getting right, right up there right for the athletes. There. I love that. We, I think we have had a one or two slight miscommunication errors due to the the international nature of this show so i think what bobby's trying to do is be the strictest most honest judge while also giving every athlete a fair opportunity all right all right pa champagne crack the bottles 306 fell down let's go it did but i'm wondering if him having to pull that first one twice was a little I rough am curious for him. to know what that's going to cost i definitely heard that now Let's just hope that Champagne pulls through with what he hoped for on his third deadlift. Yeah. All right, we're moving up to 325 kilograms. Trying to get the crowd going, guys. We are in a beautiful amphitheater right now. The weather is gorgeous. The crowd is very, very awesome. Temperature is really nice. Oh, it's amazing. All right, 325, pulling the slack out. Come on, Let's go, Cherry. Cherry. This is his second, right? There we go. That was almost a little shimmy at the top. A little bit, a little bit of spice and dice. It's interesting how certain body parts can shimmy sometimes to finish a lockout yeah. that you didn't expect and you're like, oh, yeah. I didn't know my body did that. Yeah, my toes wiggle. They like to tap dance a bit. 
I split jerked the opposite direction. I've never, I've never been a split jerker, but at the 2021 OSG, I was split jerking almost every log, and my feet were doing the opposite direction that I normally would if I wanted to split like jerk. Like your quote, strong leg was going back yeah, instead of it, forward. And I could feel it, but I was like, we're just going with it. Didn't you get like 27 reps on that log? No, I got nine reps, and I tied with Aaron Murray and Jody Kennedy. So we all walked out of that event in first place, and it was very, very emotional. Very. Or in intense, I should say. Both. All right, 3.30, Jacob McBride. Jacob McBride's been in the sport for quite a while. Also a type 2 diabetic. Which means he works so much harder. Very hard. I'm not saying that the rest of us don't work hard. No, but that is a, like autoimmune situation that he cannot Absolutely. help that he has to deal with on a daily hour to hour basis and it can be very hard to put on size sometimes in yeah. that situation or just managing weight in general up or down yeah so uh okay so he's he just said no to that yeah got off the floor for a moment and he, d he decided to call it that might be strategic that might be injury related i'm really hoping it's not injury related i think we've all had some polls where your brain says i can get this but it may not be worth it today. I wish I had had that thought when I tore my QL, honestly. Yeah, fair. That was my first time at the Arnold, and I was like, woo, go to the Arnold, and yep. then I left in an ambulance. Yep. But that's not going to happen today? No, it is not. Guys, we're having a big jump. CJ oh the my. Giant Slayer Kraus, weight class TBD, a close personal friend of mine. Opening at 350 kilograms, rocking the Ultimate War star face paint. That is 727 pounds. CJ has really come up in the last few years. Yes, he has. <laughs> that was such an easy lift. That looked like RPE grocery bag. Oh, so that was 350. The screen and still he just said. Looks so good with that dagger on his forearm. I don't know who did it, but it looks great. Was it you? I did it. I'm the one that did it. Cody, Cody likes to draw on people for fun. And for money. So money that, and fun. That was 350 kilograms, right? Yes. Okay. Yes, it was. The screen wasn't updated yet, so for anyone listening, that is 771 pounds for CJ. Which he's very well prepared for eight hundred plus today. A hundred percent. He Last might be a top contender for the deadlift event in my yeah. book. Yeah, might be. We'll see. Might be. I've heard he's good at pulling. And his deadlift has only increased since he made the jump from eighty kilogram yeah. to ninety kilogram. I will say, too, his log has exploded the last six months. He also did the Chaos Classic in England in July, and in his prep up to that, his log just skyrocketed. All right. Opening at 370, we have Ben Donan, the current 80-kilo current world champion. He has since put on some size. Uh, if anyone yeah. was there in November and saw him, he's gotten a little bigger since then. I mean, in 2021, he placed 20th. Yep. at World's Strongest Man, and then he comes back in 22 and wins, wins the U80 class. Yeah. That's unheard of yeah. for most people. Ooh, that was good. That was good. It was smooth. A little bit of fight. Yeah. What I liked about watching Ben, because Ben and I competed together last year, what I liked about watching Ben was not just at how well he was doing on each, on each event, but it's that he was attacking every event. He was not afraid of anyone or any event, and he just ran out on every event, and I felt like he just flirted with that line of disaster, but that's ultimately what won it for him. And personally for me, someone that appreciates the sport as something I do, but also as a spectator, that's why I'm here. Yes. I want to see the guys that are like flirting with fire. Yes. Yeah. There's always a risk for injury, really in any sport you do. So if you let go of the fear of that, you're, you're actually less likely to get injured, in my opinion, because if I you're think always so. thinking about tripping, you're going to yep. trip. 100%. But if you're thinking, I'm going to go, I'm going to execute, and that's why you see people like Leifa, when she was still competing, she would go out and replicate the exact movement she was about to do before she did it on the actual comp floor. Yep. She was reminding herself, I'm going to go, I'm going to clean, I'm going to roll Strong, it, press I'm it, capable. yes. capable. Yep. You it's all like all the making moonshine. The house might blow up, but you also might get some good corn liquor. So it's worth it. I'm not coming to your house ever. <laughs> All right, here we go, 335. Let's see it. All, All right, right, Jim Mitchell. Mitchell's second attempt. Jim, I've been really impressed with how Jim Mitchell's pulling. I like how he gets cranked in, builds tension off the floor. Leads with his back. Oh, that was smooth. I like that. 
And he is really tied into that suit. You can tell that that suit has no extra gaps in it. There's no all. crazy diaper that butt. He's going to have bruises in every crevice. I can tell by how tight that suit yeah, is. Yeah, those suits really tear up your They're groin. Terrible. That's I why mean, a lot of help. guys wear pants under them. Yeah. In general, it's hard to just get them on without slide pants. Them up yeah. Too. Getting them off is always fun. It does take other people sometimes. Team effort. It feels like a diaper situation. They're just yep. yanking your clothes off. I mean, I wear diapers all the time, but. All right. All right, we're going so for another weight change. 335, 335 kilograms. And now we're moving up to waiting for the screen. I can't see the number from here. That's why I'm waiting for the screen. So we're going down yeah, we're and up. Going, we're kind of yo-yoing a little bit. I think what happened is some of the guys is openers and mid lifts got a little mixed up because yeah because okay yeah i'm wondering if it's the kilogram switch for some of the guys that has caused confusion maybe and they can change their lift attempt up until the bar is loaded yes. so they can't watch the field and then decide they need to have a plan before they go out yeah Full disclosure, it's it's kind of hard for me sitting here watching everybody, especially the people we know we're friends with competing. I just want to jump up and slap them on the back and tell them how much I love them and believe them, but I got to sit here and well, you be could very also, grateful. You could also be competing on this floor if that, you so chose to. Why, well, thank you. But yeah. Well, I, just, I know I'm you can't. I, I know you love the U80 class, but you would very well. Yeah, no. You haven't done a U, U90 class. Yeah, I, so you the have. last couple of years, I do. I go 80 for the Arnold and OSG, and then anything else, I go 90. That's what it is. Yeah. All right. PA Champagne, bringing the pain. 327. Oh, that's a big jump. That is a big jump. Can he do it? Working his oh, way I up. Oh, I think he can. The strongman hitch is alive and well in Roanoke, Virginia. Locked out. Very good. Doing time. Let's go. And he definitely held it. He stared at Bobby. He waited. He made sure he was not risking that deadlift. That is a very I mean, smart who call. Look Bobby right in the eye. All the time. Look at that beard. Come on now. Well, sometimes his hat's too low. Mysterious. Brooding. He is. He is. That's why he's a nightmare. <laughs> All right. And the guys that have already finished are actually getting ready for the overhead event. Yeah. For anybody that doesn't know, folks, the Pro Strongman League shows go very fast. There's very limited breaks. So not only do you have to be possibly one of the most statically strong people in your weight class you have to have an insane amount of fitness and conditioning so that you can have a quick turnaround from event oh, to event yes. all right nick o'hare 350 350 kilograms so for my americans that is 771 pounds here we go Oh, I knew the second he yanked out the whip. There is something about the way that someone pulls out the whip in the bar yeah. that you just know. He pulled that bar like a, I don't even know what. I can't even think of a pun. He pulled the bar so fast, I'm out of puns or jokes at the moment, folks. That was just so smooth. I that feel like so he smooth. wasted that attempt yeah. in a nice way as a compliment. That was a wasted attempt. Yeah. Wow. Could have done more. I, I don't know if the folks at home can see this, but right now we've got two other athletes helping C.J. Krause strap into his deadlift suit. That is how tight and compact they need these suits to hit these weights. It's an interesting way to put it on, too. He was yeah. kneeling on the ground while they pulled up. I normally let my coach just yank me yes. into the air. Yep. So in, in November at OSG, where we both were competing, yes. I had a client of mine who I coach, and then my, my coach... One stood behind me, one stood in front of me and yanked me up like a small child by the straps. Yep. All right, Keith Cherry going right. for 365. This is his last attempt. We got 365 kilograms, 804 pounds. So we are getting very close to that American record right now. All right, let's see if Keith can do it. Uh, couldn't do it. Personally, and this is no no notes on Keith. I don't know how he pulls. I don't know his background. I am not a fan of that very 
basically bend and yank. Yeah, the, I, I used to be good at that. I, I think the stronger you get, the less good you get, the less effective that is. I think the stronger yes. you get, the more you have to build tension at the bottom. You think about sitting is, back. Yes. All right, we got Kraus coming out. His suit is tighter than it was before. Yes. This is only his second attempt, though, at 365. What did I say that was? 804 pounds? That away, baby. Oh, that was very smooth for him. Great lift. Cats in the cradle and the silver spoon. Little boy Bill and the man on the moon. Let's go. And he needed that suit off immediately. immediately. That's actually why OSG didn't have suits in this last year yep. because it was a, a rep event. And he didn't want people going to get interviewed, trying to get their suit yeah. off. Well, and <laughs> just the time. Like, it takes, on a big show like OSG, it takes so long to get into your suit that it quite yes. literally delays the show. Yes. But they are allowed this year yes. for the medley, so yeah. that's very nice. Well, they allowed, so that was the confusion at OSG. Briefs, not suits. What are briefs? This and that. It was a whole hullabaloo. I don't think briefs are suits. They're definitely not suits. That's my personal 100% not on it. suits. But the definition of what whether what a brief was was contentious on top it of comes the down to material my neoprene sleeves feel different than my ni nylon sleeves you know 100%. like you have different things for different yeah. uses and unfortunately when a show like that has to make a decision it yeah becomes a little vague it almost took two people to move that that deadlift stand is not going to survive today did you uh, say the deadlift jack or the deadlift bar? Deadlift jack is okay. not going to make it through I was going to say, you can't insult Cerberus' bar Absolutely like that not. on the live stream. No, that is the Excalibur. All right, 806 pounds. I'm not sure why the live stream switched over to... Had to help the Americans. All right, Ben Donan, 80 kilo champ, clash. That is 390 kilograms for Donan. Does he got it? Is he going to finish? And there it is. Oh, we are so the close. Hitch. I don't know. I don't know. Nope. There's Didn't something about it. that fight where you start to black out. Start to black out? <laughs> it's like, do you want to drop it before you black out, or do you want to black out and let your body just see yeah. what happens? I don't think he had much of a choice. It looked like he had exhausted his energies. That was a really great fight. Yep. That was only his second attempt. Yep. So he opened, a, yeah, made some aggressive miss, jumps. You yeah. miss. Yep, you're out. He did open with 370, so he still opened above CJ. Yeah. At 815 pounds, so he was the closest to the American record right now. Yeah. I'm wondering if Krause is going to come out and try and knock it down. Donan also could have made a smaller jump. He definitely could have and probably should have made a smaller jump. He might jump. have gotten excited yeah we all do it now cj's in a position to make the call for what he wants on his third lift and now he's the one that has all the power yep. because donan is out now those are my two top contenders yep i don't know if they were yours cj just keeps looking over dead me in the eyes with that face paint i'm getting fired up just watching well, it's because he told me that you're going to do his third deadlift, so you're ready. So right? I, I mean, I'm ready to go. You're not whatever. using a suit, though, because no, you're just I don't, making the fun of them. No, I don't. I got my Vans on. I got my skinny jeans. We're fine. My skinny jeans are essentially a suit anyway, so. All right, here we go. All right, 350 kilograms on the bar. All right, Jim Mitchell. That's 771 pounds, y'all. What I also love about this sport, Jim, not really a threat to anybody on the leaderboard, but everybody's fired up for him to lift. Come yeah. on, Jim. Oh, all right. Well, that was a good fight, too. It, but good fight. Notice how he had to open his legs. It looks yep. like he's about to make a second attempt at it, but he took uh, he, he might, opened his he legs might, to try and he's maybe recover gonna go a little. Again. No, he's done. Okay. okay. Good call. It's a hard Rarely call when you're does that ever work out. in a suit. Uh, yeah. Sometimes just getting down to the bar is the hardest yep. part. Krause is around here pacing. CJ is looking at me like a pit bull from a DMX video that just did. 
that just drank a bunch of monster mm -hmm. energy. Mm -hmm. For the family live stream. Yeah. Sorry. All right. Jim's going again. No. So, yes, he did miss that first attempt. However, he did not walk away, and his 60 seconds was not up. That's why he was able to attempt it again within that attempt, if that makes sense. So if he had walked off the platform, that's it. And now it is because he did walk off the platform. The restriction is the time, not your number of attempts within that time. So you get three 60-second chances. If you want to do nine attempts each time and ruin your weekend and cup next few months, more power to you. I just thought about what it would feel like to do nine half deadlifts at a full 100%. No, absolutely not. I think I think that's my new training program. I'm going to try that out tomorrow. Oh, your poor CNS. No, we'll hang out. We'll do it together. It'll be fine. We'll be fine. I will not be doing that. I, I will be Folks, using I don't fake think you plates. can see this, but Bobby Thompson is in the back talking to Nick O'Hare and CJ Cross, trying to get him fired up, just giving him some experience. I think he's also given him a few extra seconds to rest since basically the ball is in their court, and we are in record position. So we've got Kraus wearing wrestling shoes which I like that. It's very smart. They're very flat. They look like wrestling shoes. I saw uh, those are, if I'm correct, those are, those are deadlift shoes modeled oh. after wrestling shoes. Okay. Yeah. And then we have O'Hare coming out here in socks, even closer to the ground, more yep. connection, which I think is great on stall mats. Yes. If I'm on stall mats, I go socks. If I'm on anything else, I'm going to, I'm going to want, I want something with a little bit of grip so I can dig in. All right. I got the wiggly toes. If O'Hare pulls this, he is about to set a new American record. This is Here we go, 380 kilograms, 837 yeah, pounds. If it's, the knee. if it's above the knee. All right, he didn't make it. Good Smaller fight. jumps are needed. Fast off the floor. The speed on the floor was wild. That might... I think there might be a smaller jump right after the American record. Yeah. But maybe maybe that was the next jump. I'm not sure. Yeah. All right. Now it's on CJ. Now there's a lot of pressure on CJ because two people have just attempted to beat that record. Yep. So he knows the ball's in his court. I think, I think this is a great position for CJ. CJ is someone that competes a lot. 80, 90. He competes more than I think most of us would think is a good idea, but it's he paid off well on for it. him. It's paid yes. off well. He's positioned it in a way that he's actually gotten better through the year, so let's see him close it out. Look at that dagger. Here it comes. He's got it. No, nope. whoa, why did he look down? I thought he would have had it. I almost wonder if him looking down, he started to question himself. I think he. St I think he should have set up and braced a little longer. I think he was. I think he got a little too amped up. It is hard to stay calm yes. when other people have attempted a record that you feel very confident about, and now you feel like the pressure is on you. Well, also you're on full tilt, whether it's log, deadlift, a medley. When we walk up to that first implement, we are basically like a chain yard dog, just chomping at the bit, ready to yes, go. just chasing tires. Sometimes we're literally chasing a tire at Strongman. That is true. But the way you're saying it, sometimes you're more calm about it. Well, there, there's that line of like... Intensity. And how can I attack this workout with every fiber of my being without making a mistake? And that is... That's where the calm comes in, I yeah. think. Not, not lifting with aggression and anger anymore, but lifting with strategy and focus. As Putting the energy the actually into the movement and not just yelling and shaking your head. All right, so we are waiting for the scores to come up on the screen. By my calculations, I believe Cross and Cherry tied in this event at 365 kilos. But we're about to find out. So that's 804 pounds if both of them did tie there. So no one broke Aaron Fondry's American record. Aaron Fondry, your record still stands, brother. Good job. All right, we are in a transition now, and we are switching to getting ready for the press medley. Yes, sir. This press medley is sponsored by Zone Smelling Salts. Which Do you smell like salts? I love smelling salts. So obviously that means you love Zone Smelling Salts. Oh, I see what she said up there. 
I don't use salts for overhead medleys, though. No. It makes me cry. Yeah. I'd rather, I can cry and deadlift. I can't cry and do overhead because I can't see. I lose all my balance. Yeah. What's crazy is I cry when I wake up in the morning every day. Just because you committed to this sport? Yeah, that's it. Or, or did you cry this morning because you weren't playing the sport today? We'll just say all of it. All of it? Yeah. Yeah. We cry. It's fine. When he got the invite to commentate, he thought it was cry. an invite to compete. Yeah, that's what I thought. They're like, your ears are so big and they stick out so much. We have to have you on the competition floor because we're not going to be able to see anything. Oh, they so. told me you were going to be the mascot. Yeah, because I'm an idiot. All right, so they're setting up for this overhead medley right now. We Don't just want to give a shout yourself. out to the volunteers too, guys. Yeah. Uh, most of these guys are, most of these people, guys, girls, are, are people that compete and participate in the sport. And so they're here just hanging out, trying to help out. So every show, basically the success is based upon the, the willingness of volunteers and loaders to do that. So anyone that does that or has done that, you are quite literally giving back to the sport. And we really appreciate it. And on top of that, it's an amazing way to give back to the sport, which everyone should do at some point in whatever capacity you can. However, if you are new to the sport, it is a great way to learn different techniques, yeah. different ways of using gear. You could see somebody wearing, um, what are they called? Rock climbing shoes for yeah. a truck pull at a show. And now you have a new idea of how to do a truck pull, that sort of thing. So yeah. it's a really great way to learn stuff. And you're making friends, you're meeting other people in the sport, you're making connections at different gyms likely, especially local shows. It's a great way to see what other resources are around you because you grow with people yep. similar to you. And you so, might get a cool free shirt. Or lunch. Or lunch, maybe, fingers crossed. Some people do give a free entry to another show if yeah. you volunteer in their show. I think that's a great, that is a great incentive. It's a great too. incentive. Yeah. And at big shows, my word, they take care of you. Yeah. This show's taking pretty pretty good care of us, I'd say. Yeah. There's a whole bunch of food and snacks on the back for us. Banners We're falling. Spoiled. Oh. oh. Luckily, those aren't too heavy. So, we're going to break down this event for you. Yep. Because it's weird. Very weird. So, it's three implements. We have an axle, a log, and a circus dumbbell. And they're going to go through twice. Two runs. Do you know what fingers to use? Can you count? But the weird thing... So they can go axle, log, circus, dumbbell, log, circus, dumbbell, axle, circus, dumbbell, axle, log, all the different variations. But whichever one they pick for the first round, they have to do that for the second round. So they have to remember it. Yep. And if they miss one in the first round, they have to circle back to it. Yeah. I'm not sure how that it is totally going to look just yet. Yeah. It's going to be a little hard to keep track of. That's why we have great judges. Yes. But... I just know they can't miss anything in the second one. It's kind of like golfing. Done. You're allowed one mulligan, but when you loop back around, you've got to get it. Unless you buy more mulligans. You can buy a mulligan? At tournaments, you can. I didn't know that. You can buy T-Busters mulligans. I know, mulligans. I know so. very minimal things. Do you things golf? No. My partner works at a golf course. Oh. But I also did a fundraiser at a golf okay, course. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Big top golf energy Nancy here. I can't here. see anything now. Yeah, so I'm really excited for this. We are looking at a 280-pound axle that is 170 kilo, 127 kilograms, I'm sorry. A 280-pound log, which is also 127 kilograms. And then the circus dumbbell is 81 kilograms, 180 pounds. So now i got to ask Cody, if you could pick axle, log, circus dumbbell, what order are you going? What order? at these weights so it's going to be a cross between whether you start with what is the most taxing or the most technical so I, in my mind what i would think to do is uh whether i'm going to start with the dumbbell or the log the log is technical but it's more taxing for me it's going to be a lot more exhaustive whereas the dumbbell for me is a lot like kind of like snatching where it's very technical, it's not as um, yes. of an energy suck. So it's going to be a toss-up for me of either starting on the log or the dumbbell. I kind of think I would start on log and then go to dumbbell. I think I'm going to put the axle in the middle no matter what. Yeah. And I, I'm going to finish with the circus dumbbell because for me that's more technical and I like to finish with the more 
thought more, needed. More technical, less strength Yes, bias. because the axle and the log, once you have those movements down, they're almost always the same, whereas circus dumbbell, depending on how that dumbbell feels, yes. can sometimes feel different. 100%. We might have a sponsor trying to talk to us right now. Special guests. Okay. So we actually have some guys from First Forum here, who is another yeah. event sponsor today. Get in and get, get snuggly, guys. Let's, let's go. See. Yeah, it's this camera. Hello. All right. How are you guys doing? Fantastic. Cool. Guys. So we Good. need your names. I'm Nick Tomjanovich, and That's I'm Mason Stevens. Mason Stevens. And you guys both work for First Forum. We do. Yes, and you guys wonderfully sponsored the event. I know you have so many snacks and goodies for us backstage. Oh, Cheers. So tell us a little bit. Yeah, so First Form is a high-performance lifestyle brand. We're based out of St. Louis. Um, high-quality supplements, high-quality apparel. Just trying to step more into the more of the strongman scene, powerlifting scene. It's been really cool to see those two sports grow in the last five years. And just like, it's not the big names anymore. It's those guys that are really putting the heart and effort to grow themselves, their brands, the sport. And it's a lot of value in that we love to see. Yeah, we love that you're here. Yeah, what are you yeah, we were down at Clash of the Coast just a few months ago, too. And that was like our first big entry into the community. Yeah. And it's just, I'm a different athlete. Like, I'm a marathon CrossFitter, but I still have that same passion, like, commitment to something. Yeah. And, like, I love lifting weight. Like, I like being strong, too. So it's just <laughs> cool to see, like, that kind of commitment in a different world that it's just, like, hard for me to grasp of, like, you know, how much weight they're lifting. And it's just true admiration there. Yeah. I feel like in y'all's position, you get to see a lot of different crazy sports, yeah. enjoy a lot of different things. Yeah and maybe dip your toes in some stuff. A little bit, yeah. I mean, I would say that's how I got into powerlifting. Okay. Uh, I was just going to some meets and it's like, wow, like that's cool. I was like kind of in that weird phase of like, I like working out, but like, how do I take it more serious? How can I just start doing something where I have passion and purpose again in the gym every day? And that's what I did is like, I found this, I found powerlifting, I got more involved. And that's one of the big things I encourage a lot of people to do is kind of, you know, dip your toe, try something new and just get that experience. Cause like when you're involved in a great community like this and people that support you, people that want to see you do great, like. Come on, how would you not want to be part of that? Cody, doesn't that mean he's going to end up in strongman if he started in powerlifting? Yeah. I mean, if you That's like how to have happens. fun, you yes, do strongman. If you're boring, you do powerlifting. I don't know if you guys know that. It's a gateway drug yeah. into strongman. Okay. Bill Nye did a whole episode on it. I'll find it. Okay. It's, it's shoot. Yeah. If, if you guys had to say, you know, with, with you all as a company getting into strongman and seeing the community and stuff, what, did it, what do you think it is that, like, if you had to say like a first form strongman athlete is X, Y, or Z, what do you, what, what, in a few short words, what is that to you guys? Yeah. Ooh. Do you have it off the top of your head? I would say grit and straight passion, right? Grit, because I think grit is seen as like a lot of times strength, but those moments where it, you didn't have the best meat. That, that moment where, you know, prep is going really freaking hard and you're like, man, am I going to make weight? Man, am I going to make this, uh, am, I, am I going to hit this lift? You know, those moments of where it doesn't look like it's going to be too bright, but you keep pushing forward, you keep working through those hard things. That right there, just that, that fortitude, I guess you could call it, man, that's the piece that I think a lot of people need to understand. It's not just strength, but it's that mental strength. It could be cheesy for sure, but, like, that's how powerful it is. So the person to take themselves and their training serious and, you know, show for themselves, they have a brand, right? You know, like mentioned earlier, it's not about the big guys anymore. Like, these guys have the opportunities to truly build themselves up, build this sport up. And when they take their, their passion serious, themselves serious, and they build all together, they bring people with them, it's a beautiful thing. I think the two things that I would say would be community and then also discipline. Discipline yeah. that no matter what, day in and day out, that you're gonna show up for yourself and get the work done. And then for the community aspect, like that's very big in like the strongman world and our first forum world too, is a community that you have around each other to support you. So like those two things, like especially if they're representing the 90 kilo class, like how well do they carry themselves, want to talk and interact with others, and then the discipline that it takes to do the work day in, day in and day out. So you said you did marathons. Yeah, marathon, ultra marathon, CrossFitter. Okay. Scary. When was the last marathon you did? Nightmare the fuel. The last marathon I did was the Boston Marathon in oh, April. Nice. That yeah. is, for anyone that doesn't know, that's not not a big deal. Yeah. So I, I believe in the marathon community, you would be like BQ or you actually did yep, it. Yep, That's yep, awesome. Yep, so yeah. It was my first one. I ran a 254. Okay. I was going for a sub 250. Had some stomach issues. Yeah. Since we're on a live, I won't get too detailed into it. Yeah. He was on the news, um, let's just say. Well, we all know that <laughs> yeah. 
ultra uh, endurance athletes, well, they just have the cleanest, best diets out of anybody out there. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> don't don't check my macros the last month. But uh, they also have like the craziest tricks for like the quick energy while yes. you're running, like the different things you can wear, like the goo gels and the. Yeah. So what are some of your secrets? I know that can, oh, sorry, go ahead. Pure honey. Pure honey is the yeah. best quick trick. So like for yeah. me, Facts. Um, whenever like. Deep, so I did a 100-mile race in December in Florida, so completely just <laughs> depleted old glycogen. I lost 14 pounds that day. Yeah. Um, and you racked up three felonies because you're in Florida. Yeah, yeah. I was the Missouri, Florida man for a day. That's awesome. Um, but like, like amazing but awful. Honey and M&Ms were like my two lifesavers. Really? Savers. Peanut okay. or chocolate? Yeah. Peanut or chocolate? Uh, yeah. Chocolate. Just pure oh. chocolate. What are you? What are you? What are you? What? Go. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, now I'm confused. Which one do you go for? Yeah. I mean, to be honest, I love the peanut butter, but like, if I'm running a race or if I'm competing, it's chocolate okay. all day. All right. Yeah. No. Just wanted to go. Yeah. We're just go. So you're okay with that chocolate flavor while you're running, like that sweetness? So, so after like 60, 70 miles, like your glycogen and like sugar levels are just so depleted. So like when you do get like some, one of the aid stations is like, hey, have some M&Ms. I'm like, no, she's like, trust me. Yeah. Well, it's that instant like sugar spike that like helps give you, your body needs it. It's not like you want it. But it no, it's ahead. like the Sour Patch Kids yes. for power lift. It's percent. the same thing. It's just this like instantaneous shot. It's like when you're Sonic the Hedgehog and you're getting the rings. <laughs> but we know that the, the Sour Patch Kids are a little abused. You go into the gym sometimes and people are doing a D-Lo day and they're like, I'm not going to get my candy. I was more that of a pop guy, mm. but whatever. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, so... I've, read, I've actually read a lot of the books I've read on mindset are actually written by endurance athletes. Um, like I, I read one uh, when I got injured in 2019 called How Bad Do You Want It? Written. I love that book. Great book. Yeah. Great book. Um, and I've. It's my list. Big, big for anyone I'll send it to you. How bad do you want it? How bad do you want it? Read it, especially if, you, if you're in the midst of an injury and recovery. It's really good to read. Um, but I, and especially I, my background is CrossFit prior to Strongman. Okay is also I do think dad. from a mental standpoint because of the nature of strongman endurance athlete mindset is actually more has more carryover than say weightlifting and powerlifting type stuff because I mean we had our athletes doing a one rep extensive lift right now but most of our events are not max weight it's either for time or for reps so most like over we're working for seconds. way we're working for way longer than three or four seconds so even though it is not nearly as long as an ultra i do think that grinding out mentality of like you know what yeah it hurts but yeah i like it you can't i please correct me if i'm wrong with endurance sports you actually can't fight the pain because it's so long you have to like no i'm in it and this is just this is where we live now you gotta go to a dark place yeah like the, the biggest you know cliche line is always get comfortable being uncomfortable mm -hmm. like and in the running world everyone's heard about the pain cave yep. and it's like how well can you adapt into the pain cave yep. Yep. same in the training in any other world it's like how good can you get under that pressure yep. and then just repeating it over and over again yep. just consistently just putting yourself in really uncomfortable situations yeah. kind of like doing a marathon in florida yeah <laughs> yeah hot <laughs> sweaty i mean if we threw them into the show right now i feel like they'd be able to withstand like if we just did a run around for as long as you can no time limit these two might go longer if they have that long-term endurance prepared yeah, 100%. mindset wise yes so that mindset I, 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 is yeah. different one of the one of the more fun things and sometimes scary things that work in that first form is you just never know when events gonna be just thrown at you yeah and so one of our one of the best things that our president Sal Farcell will do is like hey by the way next week we're running a half marathon company and company-wide oh, and so wow. it, again you got to get comfortable with the uncomfortable and so for me as a powerlifter again you know it's not really the the main piece of our training wow. same here and so it's like you know I, even for us that you know don't train like that that quick ad adaptation is huge um and i to me like james lawrence uh, the iron cowboy he uh does all these amazing things endurance wise i heard one great quote it's that the next step's not going to kill you and like it's true you know at the end of the day like it is going to hurt but it's not going to kill you and you yeah. keep moving forward and no matter what it is in He's, life he did a marathon a day correct for 50 50 days yeah days. Iron, man, iron man every day in mm -hmm. every state yes, yes. yes. Yeah. There's a seven, it's seven something. You do seven marathons in seven countries over the course oh, wow. of, I think, two weeks. Because you get a travel day, you run, travel day, <laughs> run. Mason I thought about up. doing it once. Logistically, a nightmare to set up. Yeah. yeah your poor, all I can think about is your feet. Oh, your poor feet. The dogs are barking. 
Yeah, sure. you have no toenails left. Last what is Forrest Gump saying? Oh my say God. Yeah. Last year I lost seven toenails. They regrow oh. perfectly fine. Yeah. No pain either. They're For they're you, just, some people, they don't ever come back. <laughs> oh God. That's not me, but I'm just saying. Is that you? People, no. Nancy. I'll show you Nancy. my toes right now. Nancy, <laughs> Nancy you can tell me if you have some weird toes. It's fine. But you know what's crazy? When I broke my leg last year, my toenails on my right leg did not grow for months. Wow. Like I, all was, that, cu- I was cutting All the- that. Yeah. yeah your nothing. body's like, we don't need toenails. We need bones. Yeah, at first, I didn't have leg hair growing on that leg. It was crazy. <laughs> nothing was happening in that leg. I was like, oh, wow. Oh, that's that's science, crazy. Though. Quite the experience. It was. It was. <laughs> it was so part. now that you guys have seen some strong man, I mean, obviously, the whole line of first form is going to be great for any athlete. But if you guys had top three recommendation of first form supplements for a strong man athlete, what are they? Ooh, what category? Are we talking like before uh, event, line. during the event? Oh, well, we can do that. We could do before, during, after, top three, but whatever. I got you. So beforehand, I'm going to say Project One. That's our heavy daddy. Okay. Next to Intra, I'm going to say Ultraformance, three simple forms of carbs keep you nice and fueled during that workout. And then afterwards, it is gonna be a stack. So it's gonna be Formula One plus Ignition. Okay. Ignition's gonna be just a simple form of carbs, help get uh, glucose back to the body. And then Formula One is just gonna be what we call rapid assimilation protein. It's just something to help get back in the bloodstream as quickly as possible, get in that recovery state, boom. Okay. Was, mm-hmm. Sounds good. The only other th- I mean, Nick's hitting the nail on the hammer. I would say outside of like a competition, the biggest ones I would recommend is our Opti Greens. A lot of people have gut health without knowing them. Our Opti Greens are just going to help with that efficiency, d- proper proper digestion over all the nutrients. Next would be Full Mega, so that's going to be our, our Omega-3, like wild caught fatty fish one. Good for uh, cardiovascular health, joint health, like Cholesterol. everything, yeah, Big everything time. here for athletes. Like as a runner, as a power lifter, we put so much tension under our body that Full Mega is really going to help there. And then outside that, I would say post-workout, which is a Formula One and Ignition, would be three staples, Mm -hmm. the greens, full mega, and then that post-workout. Like, that's what you could do. That would be most effective. Okay, favorite flavor protein, then. Because I know Ignition's unflavored. Unflavored, correct. Uh, For the uh, protein, uh, root beer float. It's a sleep. It's yeah. a sleeper. Yeah. No, Wait. The, the, oh, that's a the Fruit Loops one. Bring it right sure. back after we leave. Yeah. Once we leave I didn't even know that was. Oh no, I've had oh. it. I used to sell first form through a nutrition store. I love the Fruit Loops and the cinnamon hey. toast. I know Wait, they're not called the same. What? But so loop to fruit. Loop to fruit. Loop, <laughs> loop to fruit. Cinnamon toast. That is a great. Yes. Yeah. That is Don't a great me, circumventing of copyright. Both of those. <laughs> Apple Jack cereal. Don't Genius. If you want to get really crazy, like this is like top tier crazy. You do one scoop of the root beer float, one scoop of the cherry lime, you got a Dr. Pepper. Pants down. Like I said, real crazy, but you have the option. Now, are y'all open to taking questions online if people want to talk to you through Instagram later? Yeah. yeah about absolutely. some of this stuff? Sure. So where can they reach you at? So my Instagram is Mason underscore James 209. Um, just a dude, shirt off, flexing. Um, and if you look at my page, it's all running or CrossFit. So Heck yeah. yeah. Uh, so then mine's going to be Nick Um I'll spell it Don't out. Don't spell it. They'll no. figure it okay. out. Okay. Um, just look for the guy that has two uh, beers in his hands and then uh, says Juicy MF in there, too. So Heck yeah. I don't know if I can say the real words, but. No, this is family, brother. Sorry, sir. Yeah. yeah. Heckin'. Family Darn it. friendly. Frick em. <laughs> Mother fricker. There we go. Say something else? No. I'm good. Yeah. Well, we really appreciate you guys. And uh, for anybody that's watching that is in Roanoke, you guys have a tent. Uh, are you guys selling? Are you giving out samples? What's going on? Yeah, so we're not selling. We're okay. truly just giving out all samples of our protein bars, sticks. We'll make people shakes. We have a bunch of hydration mixes, hand out our energy drinks. Yeah. Um, just want to be able to have the opportunity to educate and be an impact for everyone. Yeah. I actually, no, there's some, there's two people here today that probably could use some hydration and refueling. I, I think they're... I think they're doing the live stream. I don't. They're okay. <laughs> oh. Do you think they like mango, strawberry, or citrus? I think they're gonna love <laughs> anything tasty that okay. they don't have to get up and walk around and grab. Perfect. Yeah, cool. actually, I second I think that. We'll be able to talk to somebody. Easily get you guys some nice hydration mixes. Okay, we would appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. Is there anything else you guys want to add before we start this next event? Um, I'll go first, uh, and Nick, I'll let you close it. I just want to thank you guys so much for having us on. Like, the community is amazing, and like, I come from a much different kind of realm, and. It's truly just amazing how welcoming and loving like the whole community is, everyone engaging with us. We brought a 250-pound sandbag with us to do a challenge up there, and it's just cool to see everyone like participate and 
are y'all who brought the go ruck tombstone thing yes okay yes. Mm-hmm. okay yeah there's one here yes you should go throw it around and then yeah yeah so that's like nancy's warm-up weight i think that's actually my comp weight for osg yeah, yeah. yeah. no yeah, you can probably very much press it yeah no, thank you very much. Uh, no, I don't know if I can really top that, but just appreciate being here, the opportunities to be around you guys in this atmosphere. It's been great. Shaking hands and just meeting some amazing people. Yeah. There's only yeah, amazing people Yeah, we appreciate you guys here. being here so much. Yeah, thank you guys so, so much. Shout out to First Form Shout for, to First Form. for all the awesome stuff Salute. and sponsoring Salute. this event today. Here we go. Bring it in. I have nothing. Oh, wow. We'll get you one. No, that's on us. It's okay. Way to go, Nancy. Wow. Sorry, I missed, I missed the memo. <laughs> Okay. Don't worry. We'll go get you some there we go. We're going to be good. Thanks, guys. Thank, Thank you so much. much. Yeah, no problem, brother. Cool. We'll be here. All right. So we just heard a little bit from First Form. They are an overall show sponsor for us today. They are not sponsoring just one event, but the entire show. And they have a booth here. There's a whole festival going on, actually. Cody, yes. do you want to talk about the festival? Yeah. So, guys, the Star City Strong Fest in Roanoke, Virginia. So... Uh, what this is is just this community-based whole festival centered around wellness, emotional, mental, physical wellness here in Southern Virginia on the foothills of the Appalachian Mountains. I am from this area, which is part of the reason I decided to come and hang out and have a booth. Um, And, you know, not to get too much into the history, but the last 20 or 30 years of this area haven't been super kind to this part of Virginia. Um, And there's a lot of work to be done for people to be feeling better uh, in their hearts, in their minds, in their bodies. So this festival is to help people connect with the resources to help them just maybe get them to a better position in their lives that can then have a rippling effect in the community. Um, And that's something that that my brand, Stronger Together, is very invested in, that we're trying to foster in the strongman community because what we believe is that while the work you put in on yourself in the gym and maybe outside of the gym, that's very important and you need to do, but it's also your duty to try and help those around you because we're all in this together and we're all gonna be stronger together. I mean, you just heard both of them say community so many times. Yeah. It's, it's insane how much this sport can make you reflect on how blessed and lucky you feel to be a part of it, especially when you're at your worst of worst for some of us. My injury was very public, so I felt the entire love of the community. And I don't think everyone gets that opportunity, but this festival is one of those chances to feel that love and show that love and share that love. And just giving back to Strongman by volunteering for a show is another way of doing it. Yeah, And just also spending that extra 30 seconds you know, you may not remember somebody's name the next time you see them, but taking those couple extra seconds to, hey, what's your name? That's Shake awesome. their hand, look them right in the eye. You know, hey, why are you here? Who are you here to see? Are you here to compete? That's actually my new favorite thing is asking people in the audience who they're here to support. And yeah. when they're not here to support someone specific, I'm like, well, how would you find out about this? Yeah. What are you doing here? Yep. Not in a bad way. Like, I want to know Genuinely what made curious. you come to this show yeah. not knowing anyone here. And it's really cool to see the sport growing in that yeah. way. It looks like we have lost some people in the amphitheater. Maybe because well, the, of the sun. sun. I think what it I think a cooking. lot of people are taking advantage of these vendors, going to grab some food and that is some a good drinks. Point. The sun is out right up top, so I think they're taking advantage. Okay, so Bobby just finished going over the final commands with the boys. He's clarifying elbow lockouts for everybody. This is one of the sports where. You can tell a judge that you have a different lockout, but they need to be able to understand that your lockout is for a medical reason or your body's built differently, and they need to know it beforehand. You can't just, oh, I did hit that circus dumbbell, but you didn't know. Like, no, the judge needs to know first. So that's what Bobby's doing right now. Because it's a small show, he has the opportunity to talk to each athlete individually, which is so amazing. And athletes hardly ever get asked stuff like that one-on-one. Yeah. Well, also, too, like whether you've got maybe an old elbow injury or like there are people that like their elbow may appear to be not locked out. That is their range of motion. Um, They still have to wait for the down calls on a on a press event. So I think all that's really important. You see that in a lot of masters athletes that have had some form of upper body injury at some point. Yep. You also might have just seen the gentleman taking the towels off the log that was to protect the athletes all right, all right here we go with the axle as a classic push press 
How many people do you think we're going to see uh, Get all utilize six? a jerk? Oh. I don't think so in the first round, but I think on some people's second rounds is when they might bust out the jerk. Yeah. Depending on how taxing the jerk is for them. All right. So since he went axle log axle, I'm sorry, axle log circus dumbbell, he now needs to go axle log circus dumbbell. So he has three points on the board. Four points. Yep. And we're doing split times for every single one of these. So if there's any tie or confusion at the end, it's going to come down to how quickly each athlete hit each implement. I like how that his elbows dipped on that clean a, bit, clean a bit, but he's so strong he was able to recover and get that press. All right, he's getting fired up. Here it is. Is this 90 seconds, not 30, or not 60? Oh, he's fighting. I am not sure on the time cap. I'm going to go with 90. Or it could be a, two, a full two minutes. I'll time I the next one and find out. I would love a two-minute event. I wouldn't. That sounds insane. <laughs> That's the difference right. between us and endurance. We think, oh, I only have to go for a minute. No fair. Yeah. And then you go to a show where they're like, no, take this sandbag and run for as many laps as you can. And you're like, oh, God. Yep. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and time the next athlete to confirm exactly how long they have. So that was, what, five points for? All right, so we have five points for McBride. I just want to give a shout out to Bobby Thompson, who is the head judge, but what he's also doing is he's cleaning off any sweat or excess chalk on each implement so that everybody has a fair shot at each implement at their run. All right, here's Josh, one of the 80 kilo athletes who got rang up to uh, take a shot at this. All right, so he started log. Oh. So he has tons, so he was definitely utilizing a push jerk, tons of power, didn't have quite enough stabilization to finish it though, went a little bit behind him. Is this a 13 inch log? I think the center might be. It so might be a little bit wider than a normal it's 12 inch log. It's probably a little log. bit wider than 12. It's oh. also got that diamond plating on it, which it's gonna dig into you a bit. I like that. I've it, used one of the pivot It definitely logs. doesn't slip. It doesn't feel good, but it grips well. Yeah. So I shouldn't say I like it, but I can appreciate it. Yeah. I th oh, we might have a blackout. Oh, it's our friends of first form with some delicious treats. Thank there we you. go. Some suspicious liquids. Oh, oh, what do we have here? Root beer float. We'll put that in the middle to share. Okay. Just this light brown Thanks, liquid guys. for you guys. Okay. All right. So we are at a so full minute better. now. And they just said he has 30 seconds left, so that is telling me that we have a 90-second clock here. There we go. All right, so he has three points on the board. Right, he has 15 I think, seconds I think Josh left. Josh is calling it. He got one point on the board. Three. 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 Sorry. I was talking to our friends from first. No, you're fine. Distracted. Essentially, in this event, you get a point per implement, and you can only miss in the first round, but yeah. you still have to circle back which is what we saw with his first log attempt. If that had happened in a second one, he would have been done. So we already told you about the log, but the circus dumbbell, mm -hmm. Ooh, that handle is three inches. Yeah. It's big, that's that's the just, it's big. That is the first, that is the first circus dumbbell I ever used, that exact one. Don't ever go to a show hosted by Cody. He's just gonna say the weights are heavy. It's big. That's the first one you ever used That's in the first Primal? Circus. Or was uh, it well, somewhere that, else? No, it was somewhere else, but it's that same wow. one, that same model. All right, Chandler's up from Gainesville, Florida. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Oh. His eyes were closed the whole he time was, he yeah. was locking that out. Yeah, so. I'm wondering uh, if the sun was I a part of that. I can speak from experience. I, have, I now, at certain events, on, on the press event, I wear glasses because I've noticed several times where if I have direct light in my eyes on a press, it's going to throw me off. Yep. And, and sometimes you just learn that through trial and error. Yeah. I watched Vicki Long walk out onto the Shaw Classic floor last year with him, and I was like, oh, she thinks she's so cool. And then I was like, yeah. no, uh, she's smart. Yes. <laughs> she's smart. Yeah. If you're, like a, if you're a competitor that, like, holds yourself to a high standard as a competitor and a 
as a person, you're like, man, I feel like I look like a nerd or like that I am trying to be cool. But you're doing it so you can get points on the board. Yeah, you got to take care of you sometimes. Yeah. If you had to pick what of the three press implements, what's your favorite? Of the three on there. Oh, you know, log. The log was my hardest one to ever fall in love with, and then I really fell in love with it. But coming back from my injury last year, learning how to re dip has been very interesting under the log. Yeah. Uh, it, it right now it is a toss up between the axle and the log. Yeah. There's something beautiful about throwing the log up because it is harder and more technical in my mind. But knowing you can just throw around an axle is also very, very, yeah. very cool. What about you? Um, I would say just as an enjoyer of the sport and an enjoyer of like physical activity, I love the log. But if I'm trying to flex on somebody or if I'm trying to, like, yes. set, okay. set the tone, it's, it's going to be axle. axle. Um, I, think, I think I could probably hang with the best axle clean impressors almost up to 105. Oh, you absolutely can. Because of my can. background in weightlifting. Nicholas Camby, he's coming for you. That's what I heard. Uh, <laughs> he said right. you're, what was that, a 400-pound overhead where he turned around? Yeah. Cody said that ain't. Ain't anything. All right. Mark's taking his time, catching his breath. All right. So he went Axel Circus Dumbbell Log. This is the first person to take the log last. Yes. Which is kind of what you said. Yeah. That, so that was a little bit more of like a, almost like a hand clean I, finish it. I think it might have been easier for him, and that yeah. might have been why he took it last. Yeah. All right. So he's on the board with three points, but it looks like he is not going to go again. Some of these guys, once they hear 15 seconds, 10 seconds, if they know it's going to take them too long to exert all the force it's going to take to work through that movement, they're not going to do it because the risk of not getting it means they're just wasting energy. So they're going to walk off the platform and step away. All right, Keith right, Cherry up next. Up. All right, well, Cody hops into the show for a second. All right, he's doing real well. Oh, that was our first split jerk for it. He just pointed up at the sun. You can see that sun is really killing people right under the log. Little wobbly. Okay, there we go. His elbow sleeve is almost completely busted open. Okay, so this is exactly what we were talking about in the rules. He missed that log, so he now has to circle back to that log before he can do his second round. He might be running out of time, though. Good catch from Bobby. That was actually a good bail on his part. If he had intentionally thrown it at Bobby, it would have been a issue, but that is not what happened. And Bobby caught it. All right, so he has two points on the board. Get a quick reset. All right. Champagne is also taking the log first. Again, this log is heavy. It's 280 pounds, 127 kilograms. Same for the axle. That circus dumbbell is 180 pounds, 81 kilograms. All right, so he's making this look easy. That was easy. He is our second athlete to make it through the first round and move on to our second round. He might be the first one to finish all six, though. 
All right. So Cody went and asked if he could jump in, and they said no. So yeah. now he's back. Yeah. So what we got going on now? Champagne, dominated log, dominated axle, dominated sort of stumble. He's about to be the first one to finish it the second time through. Okay. So if he does this, which he, yeah. Look, it's smooth. That was beautiful. That was great. And you know, he took his time walking through each implement, probably because he walked into this more confident. Yes. Knowing like, all right, if I can set the tone, if I stay calm, and I, he probably knows exactly how long it takes him to move from implement to implement if he walks, yeah. which he did. And you see it at the CrossFit Open a lot. People walk from yep. from movement to movement, yep. trying to just reserve Keep reserve energy. energy. You know, when the, you have I'll, the time, you know it's a mass yeah. event for most people. Yeah. Why not? You don't need to be. Also, the later you go in the heat, you know that's part of gamesmanship yes. and and being an yes. athlete is. So he knows what's been done so far. So that is an advantage in placing well in the previous event. Okay. Yes. He can be a little bit more relaxed and reserved and save his energy for the back half. Yes. So we were not able to update you guys about the overall placing after the first event, unfortunately. But if you're paying attention, now you're seeing what this order looks like based off those deadlifts. So Mitchell's just throwing stuff around now. Mitchell looks like he's trying to go faster than Champagne. Yeah, it looks like he's trying to get better splits, and he is moving strong. You did miss the first split jerk, though, but it didn't work. Dag it it. Was Cherry went axle log, missed it. Circus Stonebell went back to the log, missed it. But the athletes are saying that the light up there is, the sun Terrible. is just brutal. I can tell you right now. <laughs> Like a All right, junkyard so dog he is on his smashing. second round. He's about to set the new tone. Obviously, as we get later into these events, now that we're reordering, you're going to see some intensity kick up as we get to each last athlete. And I, yep. Oh, he beat great. Champagne by 10 seconds. And we still have, Oh my goodness, we have Cross, we have Donnan, we have O'Hare. So we have some good pressers about to go. So I am real interested, interested to see how this goes. We still have Coddle, yeah. I also think an event like a press medley is a is a whole different scenario compared to, say, just one implement for reps. I think there's a lot more. Like a good presser yes. is going to do well, but someone that is a, like, Someone that might have, say, a log record, that doesn't mean they're going to smash this event. No. In fact, I mean, I felt bad because at the Shaw Classic, I'm hyping up some of the athletes for their circus dumbbell abilities, and they're like, please stop because I'm not great at log. And it yeah. was log, axle, circus dumbbell. Yeah. And I was like, oh, my God. That's a fair point. But also, they were hitting two reps on each implement before getting to the circus dumbbell. Yeah. So me talking about that, they're like, hey, we're doing all this other stuff first. Yeah. Oh, O'Hare is just blown it away. Axle, then dumbbell. They got a slight misgroove, but he was able to recover on that dumbbell. So he went log axle, axle circus. That's another shallow clean on the log. Oh. That was kind of scary. <laughs> yeah. All right, back to the axle. He's definitely got the strength, but he is moving a little slow, so I'm not sure if he's going to beat that time. Yeah. I think he's trying to secure as many points without going into the right. Right. I mean, these guys know when I say slow, it's not an insult by yeah, any means. No. Heck, most of these guys are probably going to watch this back to see if we said anything that will help them. And then, then they're going to beat me up. And then another great dumbbell. Yep. <laughs> Right, oh, 30 he went seconds. axle Look, circus on the log. Okay, so this is the last one. We've got two guys with six points so far, so this will put him in third of this event. Okay. Yeah. That is a lot of reps. I don't think he has the fastest for five. That might still be McBride. 
We'll find out at the end. Yeah. However, know, yeah. we yeah. still have Coddle, Donnan, Cross. Yeah, that was McBride. Okay. We also have volunteers checking those clips because if weights go be flying really out of your circus dumbbell, yeah. it is. I am going to be very curious to see which implement CJ starts on. He's a monster on the log. He's, he's rock solid on the other two. Is it I, the paint? What? Does the paint make you stronger? I, I think that's why he does it. I mean, Aaron Murray wins with yeah, it. He wins true. with it. So I'm wondering if we're missing out. Yeah, maybe we need to do that. I'm also wondering about the shaved head thing. You know, Rhiannon's got it. Yep. Leifa had it. There we go. It adds like 10% power. Okay, Axel. Short dip, too. Easy. He might be saving it, or he might have not. All right, so he's going Axel log. Gone all the way into it. And he vipered it. I knew oh, it. Okay. Whether he can viper that one more time in the second go around, I'm going to be really curious. I don't know if he should, though, for time's sake. No. Because if there's even a question of him missing it, like, wow. He hardly dipped for that. Yeah. That was almost just yeah. putting it up there. If he can hold this pace, he, well, all right. So he's, I know. I meant to start the timer. Yeah. I'm sorry. He's still moving real smooth. He had to kick those uh, pads out of the way a bit. Come on, finish. He better not viper that log then. And that's exactly what Cody was talking about. Like, yes, you can be, you can have a world record in one of these implements, but because they're doing all th all these things six times around, it's brutal. And when you're doing a rep event at a single, like one deadlift for reps and reps and reps, you don't have to focus as much on your internal factors, yeah. just the external go, go, yep. go. Yep. Whereas when you switch all these implements, you have to think about your techniques and your placements mm -hmm. and. Well, also too, like in my opinion, I mean, dip, dip and drive mechanics are pretty cut and dry. Like a good dip and drive on a press is on paper the same thing, but I think you and I can both agree that the very particulars of dipping and driving on all three of these implements they're different. different. It's different. Especially depending on how you shoot your head through the hole for different things. Like when you think about a block press, if you shoot your head through the hole as fast as you shoot through an axle, you're going to throw the block in front of you. Yeah, or you will never miss. save it. Yeah. Or behind you, which yeah. is even more terrifying because you risk doing something to your shoulders. Yeah. There's a lot of upper body injury risks as well. That that big bottom you keep seeing going in front of the screen, that is Bobby Thompson, the nightmare. All right. <laughs> Trying to haunt your it. dreams. Okay, so Cross only got four. Okay. That's going to affect him a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And now I'm wondering if it's going to get in his head. Hopefully not. Hopefully he can just move on. Next event. Where's Donnan? Donnan's up there waiting. I think they're, they're, they're waiting for... Confirmation. Yeah. You can also tell that Pro Strongman League was nice enough to mark the axle, which is not that common anymore. Not that I think it's a safety issue at this point. There's yeah. been too many biceps sacrificed yeah. to axles, not marked. Yeah. They didn't even mark dead center. They just marked about around where your hands might go for yeah. a wide grip. Which I like is, that. I think a mark something. in the center is pretty stand. should be standard. Yes. Yes. When we're talking about if you can make it a little bit safer – and yeah. you have athletes running to an implement, they shouldn't have to stand there and decide where yeah. dead center is. Yeah. Especially if it's going to It doesn't change the, the challenge of the axle. The no. axle by nature is difficult. Yeah. And the weight's still the weight. Yeah, so. Weight yeah, is weight. Weight doesn't care about anything. All right, starting on the log. Okay, that was easy. That was wow. fast. But the, the lockout with his head was so yeah. delayed. It was like strategically delayed. Easy axle. All right, he's going to be fast through these three. Let's see how this dumbbell is. And he is rocking all that Cerberus gear. He's got yep. the Cerberus hard belt, the Cerberus knee sleeves, elbow sleeves, wrist log. straps. So we've seen a couple of guys try and hold this pace. Whether they can hang on to it has been a different story, though. The log is very taxing on your oxygen. 
Yes. Especially this long, it feels like it just presses it all out of you. And sometimes when you roll it up your chest and you feel like you have no more air, when it's sitting on your chest, you're like, how am I going to take the next breath and throw it? And some athletes will throw it without having that breath, which yep. not a good call. No. It's easy to it's easy to make those little mistakes in the heat of yes. the moment. It is. It is. It's the heat of the moment. Yeah. But the more you compete, which is why you should compete a lot when you're first getting into it, yeah. the more you learn about yourself and your limits and what's safe, what's smart. Oh. All right. So slight confusion. He is one of our foreign athletes, so he just needed a reminder that he needed to stay in that same order. That That is another variable of, of events like press medleys is the logistics of each one. That is a whole component to doing well in the event. Yes. Okay, so he timed out. I actually am of the opinion that any press medley should have a mandatory mandatory order. It usually does. This is usually, the first time yeah. I've ever seen. Yeah. I've, I've seen it at local shows, but I've never seen a big show or an international show the, give you the option. Yeah. In 2018, that OSG, they gave you an option. Um, oh. Yeah. But everything was lined up. Everything was in a straight line. Straight line. Yeah, so, so why there was would you no, go? Yeah. Why would you go any other order? Yeah. Even though I definitely, when I did it in 2018, I definitely was like running up and down. But I also had to PR two different lifts in the medley. So you were being strategic. Yeah, I was having to be super strategic. But I, I was also jogging and moving in between the event, uh, implements as best I could. And how long had you been in Strongman at that point? A year and a half. Yeah. So that's yeah. a big deal. I actually probably loaded your weights that year. That was a very fun overhead medley to that load. That was a really good overhead medley. We used closed circus dumbbells a log, an axle, and, and a keg, a, keg, a yeah. Bartos keg, which you load. Yeah. So we had a weight matrix going, being passed around, like, so, I think it was six or eight lanes. Yeah. Just trying to make sure that when we close the circus dumbbells, they all match. Yep. Do you prefer, so we use the open bell circus dumbbells today, but there are the closed bells that look like balls, more like the, the circus. Yeah, the globes. Do you prefer open circus dumbbells or globes? So I like the shape of the open-ended bells, um, but I don't like the plate loadable ones. So like the rogue monster bells that you have to fill up with lead shot or sand, I like those. Well, that's a separate question. So you uh, like lead loaded versus plate loaded. I, well, I like the shape of that one, but if I had to pick between the one that they used and like a globe style, I'm gonna go globe style. Really? So yeah, like like the rogue one is the same shape as this one, but it doesn't dig into you as as bad. Like when it sits on the yeah. on your trap and shoulder, it's well, a little I, more comfortable. Well, some people put it right in their ear, so like I don't do for that. Me, uh, yeah. It sits clean against my head. Yeah. Whereas with the globe, if it rotates past my ear, I almost lose it. Does yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. The ones at OSG this year actually have like a clip right in the middle. That's yeah. probably going to get some people's ears. Yeah. This one was nice though, but. You like shot loaded? I like the shape of them. I don't I don't love that it's shot loaded and that the weight shifts, but I like the shape. And, You're sadistic. And, and Another I think reason. the handle is just big enough to where you don't have to death grip it like a, yeah. like a normal dumbbell, but it's not so big that it's a problem to clean. Okay. So I like the dimensions and the shape, but I don't like that it's lead shot or sand. Yeah, I'm still not going to do a show if you put it on. It's either going to be you won't know the weights and everything's shot loaded. I actually think that more of the high level shows, some of the events should be, some portions of them need to be unknown until that weekend. Now, what that part that's unknown, I'm not sure. Like, do you have just one entire mystery event? Or do you say, like say a carry medley, like, okay, we're gonna have a three piece carry medley but we're not going to tell you what the objects are, but we'll give you the weights. Okay. I mean, they do that at the Arnold when they say, you know, the top amateurs, there will be a surprise event. Yes. And then when you check in Friday, they tell you what that event is, and that's to encourage you to stay well-rounded. Yeah. Just like CrossFit Open. Mm -hmm. You don't know what you're getting into, so you need to be prepared to attack anything. I actually think that the mystery pulls out a certain level of anxiety. And yeah. all you can do is like, well, I'm going to rotate out some exercises and all I can do is just stay as well-rounded as possible. 
Yeah. And you could try to game it and look at the other events and like, well, we've done X, Y, or Z, so it's going to be this. But that's not always the case. The first time I made the finals at the Arnold, I definitely didn't think we were going to have a squad event. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. that was the literal... If I had to make a list, that wouldn't have even have been on the list. Now, I'm not complaining. I love a squad. I thought it was awesome, and it looked great. But that was, was definitely really cool. not at all what I thought we were going to be doing. I think having that, what you said about it takes off some anxiety because you're like, oh, there's this whole event. So then you can talk with your coach about doing something that you wouldn't normally get to do in a prep. You're like, yeah. hey, can we play with this today? Hey, can we play with that? And your coach is probably going to be more willing to give in to whatever weird yeah. activity you want to do, yeah. especially if you're rotating out stuff. So, I mean, you know, when you get stuck, or not stuck, but when you do a three to four month prep or even longer for something, yeah. you're hitting every event so much that at the end of it, you're almost like, I never want to do these events yeah, again. You I'm so tired on that, of it. Like, you teeter on that line of like, I am at this moment, I've never been better or more crisp at this particular set of events, yes. but also I'm about to go crazy because <laughs> all I've done are these set of events. You're like, if I never see my favorite event ever again, I'm good. Yeah. But I, then I when mean, you have a mystery event, you're like, okay, I'm going to go play with something else because yeah. I, because you'll start to mentally overwhelm yourself focusing on an event too much, yeah. which is why you see a lot of athletes sign up for a few different shows sometimes to distract themselves and keep their bodies good and well-rounded. Yeah. I mean, everyone has different reasons for doing it, yeah. but all right. They are now setting up for the Odd Objects Husafel Ladder, which Odd Objects, by the way, is one of the coolest up and coming apparel and soon to be gear. Yes. Yeah. Like, they are stepping already... into the gear realm. They were apparel at the start. Um, all my friends that wear their shorts have nothing but high praise to say for oh, them. Oh, yeah. Tommy They're also taking a really interesting branding strategy. Beautiful. Um, compared to most of the, like, strength or strongman style brands. And uh, they they are definitely uh, positioning themselves in a particular manner because all my really good friends love them and wear them. So, so that's your justification. Pretty much, okay. yeah. They, they're, they're helping out everyone on my A-list. So my A-list is... Someone that can call me anytime, anywhere, always, and I'm going to be there for them. No, they're incredible. Yeah. Their marketing is very different. Like, they're not afraid to offend. Well, I don't even say oh, offend, yeah. but some of their photos can be more saucy because yeah. they just want they're to own. They're taking hits from, like, what I would call sort of like the like uh, the uh, late 90s New York yes. fashion trends that were very yes. going on, like, which was also heavily inspired by, like, Harmony Korean and his like indie run as a filmmaker. I'm about to get really nerdy, so I'm just apologizing. I'm like, I'm like doing a little too much revealing. No, you're my, good. Yeah. Have you ever gotten a train at Squats and Science in New York? I have not. No. It's the so Tommy Lavelle owns Odd Objects. I believe he has a business partner, but I'm I don't know if it's Alec or not. I'm it not sure. might be. So I'm sorry if I'm wrong. But he also owns Squats and Science, which is this really cool gym in New York. They have done an amazing job with such a small space they might have moved but when you're talking about the 90s he only plays like old hardcore lifting yeah. videos grungy stuff like just the craziest motivation because he's not into the cliche stuff yeah and that's what odd objects is yeah and it's convenient that they're sponsoring this event because it, it's odd for sure yeah i i've never seen a hoosable stone ladder i am a huge fan of that i like that yeah. as an idea I, I can't say that in my mind I've got enough experience that I'm thinking about the training that would go into it. You'd hate it. You'd yeah. Hate it. Now, high temp, high temp are the rubber coated, more yeah, comfortable. The Gucci Hoosable Stones. <laughs> Gucci. Do you prefer the high temp stones? They're usually shot loaded though, so that yeah. that's unfortunate because they're awful to reload and dump out. But do you prefer high temp or the metal ones that cut high into temp. you? High temp. Now, for training purposes, I choose metal because high temp is easier mentally it's, for yeah, me. for sure. So I bought a metal one to force myself to hate it, to work through it. For like, sure. You train harder than you compete, right? Yeah, I think. We're sharing all uh, our secrets today. Yeah. Do something that makes you real miserable. <laughs> Go high temp. Uh, get a high temp. So Just I, I definitely think that's a good idea. I mean, also logistically as a training tool, having a loadable Husafel stone is a much better idea. Um, Especially if you're training with somebody else. 100%. If I I don't own my own Husafel stone, if I did, 
I would honestly just opt for the high temp and I would just load it to like probably between 285 and 330 and just leave it be. Um, just because that's... So what are you warming up with? Just sandbags or like a, I don't know. <laughs> just sandbags. Uh, so that's actually not a bad idea. Yeah. That is a good point. I would literally probably warm up with sandbags. Um, but I, in terms of like what feels good and what I, like if I see a competition with a crucible stone in it, in my mind, I'm like, please be the high temp. Oh, yeah. yeah. Which, I hate to say it, but we are not using high temp today. I am almost positive that all three implements are going to be the metal ones. But these metal ones are, they have the same pattern. What did you call the pattern? Diamond plate. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. As the circus stumble and the log do. So at least there's a way for it to grip into your arms. Yeah. That's the really awful thing about the slick. Like, I have the Titan. Husafel, which I love. It's a great piece of equipment, but because it's smooth and bare, it just sits right in the crook of my arm. Yeah, and it's it like the, feels like it's, it's like a truck bed. Like a Silverado yeah. fresh off the car lot. It's like, hey, do you want to pick up this sharp edge and yeah. carry it around? And you're like, no, not really. All right, they Did are you getting do their the new nationals order that right had now. the Max Husafel stone carry. Which one was that? I think that was the year that Vicky won her pro card. Then no, I have not been at a nationals with her. But that sounds that, fun. That might have been the 20, the 20 Nationals. I've done it at a local show where my coach was actually hosting it. Shout out to the Foundry and Greg Popejoy because he made us. Actually, he's done two evil events like that. He did one where you had to run for max distance with a Husafel, but he gave out cash prizes for the longest distance There male, we go. Longest there we go. Now female. we're talking. But then for another show, it was like 90 degrees high humidity we had to take a sandbag and run for i think it was a minute and a half now uh i'm assuming and i thought it was going to die. be front carried i don't remember if he had a rule for that one yeah it was like two or three years ago now yeah i forget the specifics that's the fun thing about strongman is if you don't write down every show you do i like You're to write gonna, down it, notes about my shows so i can look gonna back blur together <laughs> yeah especially if like you I mean, if you're if you're like most people, what you're first going to start doing is more than likely you're going to do the shows that are near you, and those promoters are going to, they're going to, you know, like my first shows were were all Lynn Morehouse shows, which there's a lot of positives to my that. My first show is yeah. at Lynn's house. The, the po that's awesome. The positives <laughs> to doing a, a Lynn Morehouse show is that they're going to be really well organized and really cool. The downside is is they're all going to be really heavy and gross. Um, I think that's the fair. first three strongman shows I did were all Lynn. And they all had multiple piece events every time, which that is a lot of fun. But setting that up in training is brutal. Oh my goodness! Yeah, I, like just this this press medley we just had. I mean, I know you've done enough. Setting it up, but by all yourself. I was thinking about just now is if I spent the last eight weeks setting all three of those up. One, even if you do some weird A B setup where you're only hitting it twice a month, mm -hmm. that's a four hour day. You know, now you've got me wondering, because my first Strongman show technically was Static Monsters at Lynn's house, where I went to support it, and Lynn and my coach actually were like, eh, we're throwing you in, here's some yeah. clothing, we paid your entry fee, let's go. And it was only the overhead and the deadlift, yep. and then I went into, I think, two or three local shows back-to-back, -back where all of the events, there was maybe only one medley or two medleys. Yeah. So now I'm wondering, if I had started when all the shows are just medleys, 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 yeah. would I have stuck it out? I don't know. It definitely makes when you're new. Because it's mentally it, it's, tough. It is. Br I, so full disclosure, and I, I, I don't feel bad saying this because I know that you and all the other hot, there are days like in prep, especially if it's a show that you're invested in the outcome, heavily invested in the outcome. Oh, yeah. um, setting up those type of events, that's the hard part. By yourself? Yeah. Especially if you're training at, in the elements like you're out in the sun because your gym makes you run el run events outside yeah. and all your training partners can't make it that day or yeah. you're trying to squeak in a 5 a.m workout and you're like i have an hour to set up three events and run it and yeah. you only get through and one it takes an hour to, to do one not to mention the family aspect or the other life work life balance things when your partner's like why are you at the gym for four hours yeah. doing three events you're like well, I had to warm up for each portion of the event. Set I had to up, set up the weights. Down. I needed crash pads. I needed to protect yep. the equipment. I needed to make sure the gym was okay with it. You know, yep. there's so many things, so many factors. Yeah. I actually uh, a lot. Ne I've never had a training partner until the last couple weeks. And I'm actually their training partner. They're getting ready for nationals. 
and um, I'm able to jump in with them and help them out. But I've, other than, I, well, I had a couple of, yeah, I've never had a true training partner. Me and my buddy. A little violin uh, for you. I don't have a training partner. It's it's interesting. Yeah. I actually just set up my first garage gym, and I thought, wow, this is going to be so fun. But it's like, oh, I'm by myself, and I'm in a quiet neighborhood. You know, yeah. it feels like you're out of Your the element. gym element yeah. sometimes. So I still do love the gym atmosphere. Yeah. It's like it's like they said in Jurassic Park. I'm Now I'm by myself talking to myself. That. That is chaos. That's a really good example. Okay. So... I guess I should tell you guys the weights. She just said third is halfway. I love it. It's like five being an even number in the gym. Okay, so their first, they have three who spells they have to take. The first one is 300 pounds, 136 kilograms. The second one is 340 pounds, 154 kilograms. And the third Husafel is 380 pounds, 172 kilograms. They have to take each one 30 feet, but the way they're setting up the floor. It looks like they're staggering them. Yeah, it looks like when the first one goes, it'll go to the furthest line. And instead of making the volunteers move that Husafel immediately, they can let the athlete just back up that yeah. 30 feet. That is a very clever and Ooh. efficient way to run this event. I am genuinely impressed by that. And it's pro strongman league, so it's pro strongman league. Obviously, that's what's going on. But I wonder. I'm, sorry, I'm, go ahead. I'm the first to admit I am not the best with figuring out those types of logistics. Yeah. So when I see a really simple, clean solution to something like that, I am always really impressed. I mean, that's another thing about going to all these shows just to volunteer or watch or support somebody. Every once in a while, you'll see an event that you've never seen before because Strongman is just so diverse in events. Like, there aren't even set events. We yeah. change the way we run medleys. We change the way we do a rule for a simple deadlift. Like, they're never the same, and you can always pick up tricks, especially if you want to promote one day yes. and put on your own shows or just own a gym. When you own a gym and you're trying to bring in all this Strongman equipment, when you look around and you're like, oh, I just need one crash pad. No, you no. probably need... A lot more if you're going to run medleys and let more yeah, people do I, things. I mean, what do you think the bear, if you have a, a, a true, and I mean a true strongman gym. I don't mean a gym that's got a log and a set of farmer's handles. You know what I mean. I do. A gym that is, they've got stone platforms, they've got a lane for moving events, a true strongman gym, crash pads alone, <laughs> bare minimum sets. How many sets of? I'm going to say three sets. So six. So six. But anytime I – so, like, my coach's wife works at a gymnastics gym, and she's giving me gymnastics, like that thick white mat. Yeah. I keep that stuff around, too. Yeah. If I get gifted items like that, you don't throw them away. You take advantage of yeah. them. Pieces of wood. You want to build a stone platform one day, you're going to need something to catch the weight of that stone more than these mats do to catch the impact a little. Yeah. You take advantage of the free things you're given in the sport. Did you see my newest toy? I was driving through an intersection a few weeks ago, yeah. <laughs> and I saw a fire hydrant just hanging out. Uh, a, a decommissioned. Yes. I checked with my friend who works in the city. He said they do not use them again if they're broken. Yep. The base was broken. So I parked my car in my nice professional clothing, and I went and rolled it over to my car and took it home. There we go. And it weighs about 180 pounds. Nice. Haven't played with it yet. But that's free. Free. Decommissioned, not Decommissioned. used. Not not stolen. Fire hydrant. Not stolen. Do not advocate. Reappropriated for, for the cause Repurposed. that is Nancy domination. And Our also so point. Cody can come and hang out and use it too. Yes. Our whole point is that your strongman gym is gonna grow in materials, but it's also probably gonna grow in the odd, odd. objects. Oh. And oh. Oh. I mean, I think that's probably one of the most, that is the most strongman named company I've ever seen. Oh, yeah. But Odd like, Objects is like in a, genius. In, in, in an informed and thought through way. Yes. Yes. Because everything we do is so odd to other people. Yeah. Like when they think we're bodybuilders and they're like, what do you do? CrossFit or bodybuilding or powerlifting? And you're like, no, strongman with the stones. And, yeah. the, and they're like, yeah. the what? 
the stuff that six foot eight people do that you watch. Funny enough, at the Arnold, we had a replica Hoosiful Stone of the actual Hoosiful Stone. So for anyone that doesn't know, the Hoosiful Stone is an actual stone that is in Iceland, and there's a whole historical significance to picking it up and carrying it, and it's this natural rock that is in a very particular place in Iceland, and there's a whole cultural background to it. They had a replica of it at the Arnold that I had a chance to use. I, as someone who's pretty good at loading, especially sandbags, I had a hard time with it. So, like any good athlete did after my Arnold, I'm like, okay, well, I got to get better at more unconventional strongman loading events. So, okay, I'm going to buy a, a replica Hoosiful stone, to which my friend said, hey, man, you could just go outside and grab some rocks, to which I said, oh, yeah. How many rocks do you think guys that work construction take home, you know? Yeah. Just, oh, this one oh, is a, good a block press. Yeah. That's actually what I was thinking about when I saw that there was a block in OSG's yeah. uh, layout this year. I was like, maybe I can just go find a concrete block. And then my friend decided to loan me one. And yeah. I was like, oh, thank God. I've Bless. also seen people use sandbag press. Um, I actually had somebody, uh, they had a block press, but it wasn't like the Mauser block or anything. It was like some sort of a less common brand and it was real narrow and um, they actually used, they were a uh, female, they used a men's circus dumbbell because it was closer to the dimensions and just pressed it from the bottom across. So they grabbed both That's, ends. So it, it's got a risk of just rolling. Like a peg of rolling. However, yeah. you're increasing your stability and yeah. your ability to hold on because the block, you have to hold with your hands open. Yeah. So. It's almost like you're teaching yourself to stabilize when you lock out in, yeah. in a different it's way. It's almost like a close grip bench mixed with a bottom up kettlebell press. I don't even know if I can comprehend what you just said. So if I'm anyone's say watching yes. this and you're not doing a bottoms up kettlebell press in your accessory work or stabilization no, work. No, it's the way you just said do it. Do that now. <laughs> I know you know what it is. I yeah. do. Yeah, it's that the way you said it. That conglomeration of verbs didn't go well. It's like when your coach puts something new in your program and you're like, I've heard of it before, but I got to like Google it real one quick. one word you know with a word before and after that you don't know. Yeah, like you know the person's it's named after somebody. Yeah. You know that name and you're like, what the? Yeah. Tall, kneeling, supine, something or other. Cool, thanks. You just add things together. This Some, put me in a weird place on YouTube. I'm not really comfortable with it. Those are always the events where my coach like won't put a video in and I'm like, hey, hey, that's the one I need a video yeah. for. I need a demo. I'm dumber than you think I'm smart. He's like, you're smart enough to Google. I'm like, that that is fair. That's fair. I am. Well, you should, yeah. We all should be. Yeah, 100%. But what well, you, you said. You get those curveballs some days, and you're just like, is this real? It's true. Or is this a test? Okay. So based off our last event, I don't know if we have the scores available yet. Well, an event Looking like at that the press score table. Is gonna, there's a lot of. The split times are going to affect how quickly they yeah. can get the scores in. But who do you think, based off what we've seen so far, because I feel like Champagne has a really, really good chance at this event. However, he pulled four deadlifts. Yeah. I think, given that he moved sol solid on the deadlift, solid, and then he moved pretty crisp on the medley, to me that's... To me, that would lead me to believe that he's pretty well-rounded. Yes. And I think you can be really good at a deadlift, but that doesn't mean that you're going to be exceptional at a hoosable. Oh, you here we go. to pick it, but that's not going to necessarily lead to foot speed and agility. That because is Because you very know true. as well as I do, because this is a three-piece carry medley, that time in between implement one and implement two and implement two and implement three is just as important as your time carrying the actual implement. Yes. I've won countless medleys because I'm sprinting faster between the, the uh, implements, even though you might be moving faster with the actual implement. That's fair. I mean, you see that when um, people have to go down and back with farmers. You'll always yep. see someone shoot out the gate, but it's when they drop and turn around that you might see the slow and steady tortoise yep. come back and beat them. I think Mark Felix did that last year. It almost looked like one guy was going to beat him because he start he. I think beat him on the first end, yeah. but the way Mark Felix came back, just won, you yeah. know? Okay, so we now have the new overall placing. This is first. 
So we have, it looks like this right side is points. Would that make sense? Yes. Okay. So we have Langlois in 10th right now with one point. Coddle. Coddle. Second. I'm sorry. In ninth with two points. Actually, I'm not even sure if those are points right now. Because they shouldn't look that simple. Anyway. anyway. Keith Cherry's in eighth. Mark Cummins in seventh. Ben Donan in sixth. Nick O'Hare in fifth. Jacob McBride in fourth. CJ Kraus in third. Pierre Alain Champagne in second. And Jim Mitchell in first. Which definitely makes sense. We had Champagne finish all six. We had Mitchell finish all six on the overhead. CJ had one of the heaviest deadlifts with Cummins. So I'm actually surprised that Cummins is down there right now. But Mitchell's sitting in first. So he's going to go last in this event. I think O'Hare might. I think O'Hare. He's in fifth right now. He yeah. might move up a lot with this. I'm O'Hare and Kraus, just because I have done a lot of the same competitions as those two i this is a this is a very like lynn osg sort of event don't say that because lynn's gonna hear that and try and put this in osg next year he wouldn't dare lynn turn this off don't watch no but this this has very and it, this is going to be very contrived but anyone that's been in the sport long enough this has big 2018 2019 strongman yes. vibes yes you know so we're getting back to some real disgusting events and i yes. mean disgusting in the most complimentary way yeah, like, i love disgusting but we also fear it yeah <laughs> you gotta I, set up for it and you gotta get ready for i it. love those events whether it's i don't care whether it's just a heavy there's just some type of an event and it's not a category of an event there's just certain events that when you do them in the, the for the first time in prep as testing or like all right let's see where we're at what do we need to focus on for this particular event when you get done with that first go at it you're like wow that is so gross it's going to be cool to get real to yes. really refine and work on this. especially when you get to the point or if you if you're somebody that gets to the point where you work above comp weight and you're grueling and almost crying at the end of your session because yeah. you're like i just don't want to be alive anymore after yeah. doing that and then you get to the actual competition, you're like, oh, I forgot that that was not my comp weight. And yeah. this felt so yeah. easy, or even especially just if, when the adrenaline's popping. Yeah. Or even if you take like the volume approach where it's like, I'm going to pull back. I may not hit comp weight that much, if at all, maybe one or two times. What I am going to do is like seven or six attempts at this at a lower weight that's going to have like a cumulative build over time. Um, with like, Don't use big words on this stream. This is strong. I'm going to do a lot. So I could do a little real good. That's not for you guys. It's for me, too. <laughs> but either way, it's just digging into the grind and just like, what's the approach going to be? Am I going to, like you, am I going to go over comp weight so that come game day, I only did this run maybe one or two times. But uh, if it's like if it's a yoke, you're like, I don't need to worry about this. I was doing runs at 780, yeah. today is 600. Even picks, like I really like, yep. if there's a heavy yoke, I just like to do a heavy, heavy, maybe 100 pounds more than comp yep. weight, just to teach my CNS and teach my spine, this is what it's gonna feel like. So then when I actually do it, I'm like, oh, that's not what I felt like yeah. at all. A fun feature of the Strong and Together training program, of which I own and run with Ross Rimmelard and Andrew Haynes, is Which can be yoke. found. At the Stronger Together yep. on Instagram. Yep. One of the yoke protocols we have is we have a yoke complex. So what you're gonna do with that, it's gonna start with a yoke pick into a 10 second hold. Okay. Drop it, pull off anywhere between 50 to 100 pounds. Okay. Into a 50 foot carry, rest two minutes, five sets. Okay. And as it goes along over the next coming weeks, the hold gets a little shorter, gets a little heavier, less sets. You know, it tends to comes up, that sort of a thing. Yeah, I do like that. They were kind of quiet about Langlois starting right now. Yeah, sorry about that, folks. He is making short work of this. He is. He's already on this third Husafel, which is, my goodness. This is 380 pounds, 172 kilograms. That, that was, was a, a really good run. run. I do think we're going to see some of these next few competitors absolutely obliterate this okay so this is going to come down to speed yep and i gotta say the guys with the real thick thighs especially i'm going to call out o'hare and cross right now 
they're going to come back with kind of a vengeance for that last event. Knowing those two, I've seen the way they strategize in a show. And O'Hare is definitely someone where it, he puts the last event in the back burner, moves on to the next, and he decides how he's going to dominate differently. Yep. And he's quick. Yes. He's very quick. I don't know how quick Cross is. Cross, he's fast. Oh, that's so cool. Look how they're resetting it. Yeah, that's smart. I've yeah, never seen really that. Really good logistical move. Now, as someone that's done uh, medleys and stuff with Kraus, either in the same weight class or he decides to go up a class or, or whatever, uh, he, he can move quick. Yes. A lot of people think it's the big thighs that make you finish an event like this, but sometimes it's the scrawnier guys, like the wiry, crazy ones that have real quick feet yeah. under the weight. I mean, you have to have a strong posterior chain to pick this thing off the ground, get yeah. into the right position, but, you know, the most jacked person is not going to be who wins an event. It's also not necessarily going to be the person that wins the whole show. Debatable. Is muscle fiber Debatable. bad? Absolutely not. No, no, no. I'm just thinking about um, lighter classes because you almost always look jacked in the lighter uh, well, yeah, classes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's but where the my most mind jacked went. person within that yes. class is not necessarily yes. going to be the winner. Right here, gonna throw it down. Nice shot from Taylor. All right. Kind of got a steady pace going. And the way these are loaded with chains, they're not very easy to just pop no. up higher. So, so the way they're sitting. what I like to do is I keep my knees on the pick a little more narrow. I use it to tip the Hoosable Stone forward a bit so that I can have a little bit more of a hinge and not just a front squat. Okay, Does yeah. I push forward, squat yes. into it, hug, and stand. Yeah. It gives you a little bit more of a, a hinge. To oh, see, he just tried to do the pop-up, and he almost lock, lost it. I can tell you right now, that re-pick of that Hoosable Stone is going to be gross. It's awful. That's when your spine completely yeah, that's doesn't want to listen to you. Yeah, that's when the predator comes up and pulls your spine out of your back. Oh. <laughs> All right, Bobby's trying to get his belt off as fast as possible. All right, so Cottle finished with two. I don't think he's going to keep going, even if he still has time. Yeah, no, he's, he's done. Those, those will absolutely take the wind out of you as well, especially if it's so compressed against your chest because you feel like you're losing your grip. It's harder for you to breathe. Yeah. And then when you start to trip with those things, you get very concerned about, am I going to bust my shin completely open? Yeah. Also, when if, if the hoosable hits the ground and it's face down like that, the chances of you being able to get it up in time off the ground is little to none. Yeah. It's like picking up a kilo plate when it's flat on the ground. Yep. You're almost just like, all right, this is going to take a while and I'm going to get angry. Yeah. And get real angry. We're having fast resets on this event. Very fast resets. I mean, if you think about it, we are almost at the halfway point. Once we get through a few more guys, we will be dead center of this event. We only have two events after this. Yep. We are three-fifths of the way through. Can't just say half. You got to make it complex. What do your programs look like? Do one-eighth this stand up turkish there, there, there's get up. i'll say this about the programming from stronger together programmed by myself cody abel andrew Haynes, and ross rimillard is that we leave little to no question as to what you should be doing oh here we go there we go that's that's the that pace i want to see in the transition that was very fast yep i also like how we started moving over here. even before he had it all the way up on the pick because they're not having to load this to a surface i think you should start moving before you've stood all the way up with it. I think you need to get moving soon. Now let's talk about the fact when you're running like this, part of you doesn't want to throw that weight down. You yeah. almost want to set it down. Yeah. Like that's what your brain's telling you. How do you work past that thought? How do you tell yourself, throw it and be fast? Practice. And just, I think that also comes with experience. Um, and in an event like this, what my concern would be is hitting the volunteers. Yes. You start um, to think about too I, many I definitely factors. think I would follow through dropping it guiding with my hands but i would be turning as i'm doing that yes kind of like a sandbag you get exactly to and you start to throw as you're yep. turning i've also had enough medleys where we've had to load a hoosable stone to an elevated surface which is Isn't terrible that, wasn't that what you did at the arnold last year that was part of yeah the arnold and we also i had it at my 
uh, at the 2018 NC Strongest Man. Um, we had to load a sandbag, a keg, and a hoosful, and the hoosful had to uh, get a, be loaded to a 54, 54 inch platform. Um, That's brutal. Which is brutal. I mean, what you did at the Arnold was brutal. It was, walk me through, I don't remember the Block, implements. sandbag, fire hydrant, hoosful stone sandbag? Or, no, there was, no, there was, was a the, pass cube. It got it the, changed yeah, it because some stuff started breaking. Because the athletes are too strong. So you guys didn't have to stand the fire hydrant up. All you had to do was get it onto the loaded, platform. Yeah, it did not have to be vertical. But the strongest firefighter competition that happened the next day, they not only had to load like five hi fire hydrants, but they had to stand each one up. Yeah. And they got heavier and heavier. Yep. Oh, Lord. Yeah, no Those thanks. Those look brutal. All right, here we go. All right, we got comments going fast. I think Cherry was still moving a little bit faster. Yeah, I, I, he's definitely gonna finish, but he no, might be yeah. our new second. No, the he's definitely not. He's not gonna beat the previous athlete's time. He's you, already behind. Do you think anyone's gonna trip on this event? Not that I want it. No, we don't want it. I definitely think there's a. I don't know. Like so towards the end, a, if this was a keg carry, I think there would be a higher probability of that. Yeah. But I think with it, whatever the difference is, uh, I think it's a little less likely with the Husafel. All right, he's almost there. All right. You can see that Hoosfeld's hitting his thighs, so he's doing a real wide left yeah. to right waddle. But it worked for him because he was moving efficiently. He didn't really waste any time. Yeah. But he didn't have. He wasn't as, as aggressive fast, on the transition. Yes, not like Cherry. So yeah. Cherry's definitely in first right now. You know, it's not that scary to think about tripping with a sandbag, but when you no. think about a keg or a Hoosfeld. You have no idea what bone you might jam into it. Yeah, I mean, if you fall forward with a hoosable stone or a keg or like a like hard surface object, you like might bust your teeth out. Yeah, or you're you're gonna lose the end of a finger. But in a show like this, there's a lot of pressure because it's an international show. You want this title, so as it gets closer to you, you're thinking about time. Yeah. And it's really hard to gauge your own time in a medley like this. Yeah. Like almost impossible because you're thinking about breathing, your footwork, and all yeah. the other factors going on. So you're just thinking, I gotta go fast, I gotta go fast, I gotta go fast. When you've done events like this, is it going by extremely fast? Is it going by slow? Is it both? Oh, it feels so slow in the moment. Okay. And then when you hear your time or they call time or something like that, you're like, what? Yeah. You're like, that was not a minute. Yeah, for like me it's both. For me, the, the, the carrying or the moving of the object uh, feels really fast and then yes. the transitions feel really slow yeah you're like i'm not sprinting and then you watch back yeah. and you're like oh i was yeah. i was kind of sprinting yep but you start to judge yourself a lot harder donan is just donan. full sending on this yeah. which i'm a fan that's that's uh he might beat cherry's time with this possibly speed a little slower on that pick than i would have expected are you hearing the start because i am not hearing the start of each event they're running it fast here today at psl 90 yeah guys. That was a good time. I think Bobby's more focused on the athlete and the judges helping him yeah, here good. in the start. Okay, that moved him into first. Okay. 28.2, that is fast. I mean, the faster you get at moving events, the less you have to embrace the suck. There you go. That's that. So that's got to be the faster it's event, over. That's be the method. Well, if I go faster, it's done sooner. Yes. But that can be dangerous if somebody tries it in like a max event, because that's where an injury could happen because you forego technique or something basic. Man, this pipe. I'm real excited reset. to see Nick tackle this. I see next. I think so. Nick's opting for the wide receiver gloves. I'm gonna be honest. I don't know if they would really make much of a difference. I don't in my like experience. them. I, I tried like them, them, and I feel like. They grip, but they slip off they, your hands. Yeah, if your hands get sweaty, they still shift around. Yeah. All right, here's what I loved. Nick picked it and started moving well before okay. he stood upright. There we go. He didn't even care about throwing it. He oh, just went for it. it. There we go. Which, as long as they're not chucking at the yeah. volunteers, they're allowed to throw 100%. it. I love it. He's so fast. All right, come on, Nick. This might be... Oh, I don't know if he picked that well enough. That's a little low. Like, low compared to his other yeah. two, but that was great. That has to be our new time. That was great. 
29.8. He is almost two seconds slower than Donnan, which that didn't feel slower. It didn't, but that's how those events go. But, I mean, when you're watching, too, you yeah. can't, it's hard to assess time after yep. you've seen everyone go. Yep. I could never judge a beauty contest. I wouldn't know how to assess people separately at that point. I think I'm assessing a beauty contest right now because I'm looking at CJ Krause getting ready for this event. He doesn't hear me saying that, but I know he's going to rewatch this, so I know he's going to hear it eventually. He's going to think you have a crush on him. Yeah, I do have a crush on him. He's one of my boys. He's one of my boys. The, Sorry, bulge, the bulge boys. Run as fast as you can. But I was just thinking how, you know, we just had a almost two second comparison between Donan and O'Hare. That's why we have Bobby judging, but we also have someone running with the athlete. We have a timer. We have a mm -hmm. scorekeeper. Everyone has a separate job so that no one messes up their job. Also on events like this, a second is a lifetime. Yeah. It doesn't sound like it, but it is. Yeah. So when you have judge or, judges errors, it, it'll upset an athlete real yeah. quick. That's real fast for McBride. I, that's All right. That. So that's all right, guys. Jacob McBride's doing great, but that kind of slow hesitation pick on that second hoosable, thats what's going to be what's going to cost him. I think on the this. third pick for O'Hare might have did it because I think so it, too. Did, it looked like he couldn't get low, like yeah. he might have been excited. I actually think that third pick was better. That than That was second faster. Pick. Oh. oh. It looks like the front of his foot got caught on the yeah. rubber mat. All right, guys, we're just taking him in. They're going to check on McBride. He's up, moving. I think he's okay. Looks like he took a spill. I'm not sure whether they're going to count that as finished or not. They're deciding um, right really now. Worried about that. What we're worried about now is just making sure Jacob's okay. Okay, so they're clarifying that he didn't throw that on purpose, which... I think that should be fairly apparent. I would hope so. I don't know if an athlete would ever say, yeah, I did throw that at you if they did. No, well, I don't think he did. I think he was falling and was just yeah. choosing to try and save his it's own life like, in that just moment. Just like what he said about Buzz Lightyear. It's falling with style. All right. So I guess we are not going to know if that's. I think they're counting it, and that's why they were asking if he threw it on purpose. Well, I think he was telling them preemptively. Hey, okay. that wasn't an attempt to win. I just fell, and he he fell with style. Yeah, they're and still it, talking I, about I it, think, though. Yeah, they're trying to clarify whether they're going to give him that third one. I really hope so, because I want to know that time. Yeah. But the question, I think the question is that it didn't make it all the way onto the mat. So is that a shorter, quote-unquote, distance? Because where he yeah. fell is, wasn't 30 did, feet. Was, yeah, it, was that more of an advantage than the other athletes within the parameters of the rules? I'm just glad he's okay. Yeah. Once I saw his foot catch the rubber, I was like, ugh. Yeah. It's interesting how your legs can break in simple situations based off pressure shooting through it. Yeah. I'm not even talking about my – I'm just talking about he could have really hurt himself from yeah. that fall. All right. Got cross going. Oh, snap. All right, CJ. All right, pretty good transitions. Very fast. The second one was a little slower. You know what I think it is on the second pick? It's getting I think, slow, lower. I think the, the second Hustiful Stone being in front of the third one is making the guys second guess a bit because they don't want to knock the third one down behind them. You see, I thought that too, but the first one, I noticed they all have enough space to squat down and yeah. get it the way they want. Well, I'm not saying they're spaced in inappropriately. I just think that they're just a little, they're a little nervy. Just a gorgeous wind gusting through. Happened to knock down some signage, but these Blue Ridge Mountains are giving us some wind today that feel real good. All right, they're trying to figure out what Cross's time was. If that wasn't first, I would definitely assume. Uh, I don't know. He looked like he was as fast as O'Hare. Nobody's giving us times now. Yeah, I'm we're not sure. Sorry, it. folks. We are waiting for the score on Kraus. All right, I think we are getting ready for Champagne to go. I 
Abby does have a good point. Abby's actually commentating right now, Abby Deal. She is a pro strong woman in the 82 and 90 kilogram women's class. But she's talking about how nobody does this as a full-time job. Like, sure, we have coaches, yeah. but Cody also tattoos, you know? This is not a sport where we're rolling in dough like CrossFit. <laughs> yeah. But not we're yet. working on it. You guys get more people to watch these streams. Yeah. Okay, All right, Champagne's already. Champagne. We need the music back. Let's go. I love it. Running like a cat on a hot tin roof. Let's get going now. I think the weight difference between the first one and the second one, because we're going from 300 pounds to 340, it yeah. looks like it's just causing a lot of – it's sinking deeper on yeah. the athletes once they get it. I don't know what Pierre's time is going to be, and I can tell you this. He – gave every ounce of energy into this event and it has got me fired up. I'm about to flip this table over. Let's go. No, you're not. Sorry. Sorry. No. Sorry. Sorry, Nance. Control yourself. Another reason I'm not coming to your house. Well, probably Lane and the dogs keep me in line. All right. So he finished, but no one gave me a time. Yeah, there's a little bit of a delay of getting the results to us, guys. So we're just trying to provide just raw, informed, fun commentary. All right, so we have one athlete left, and that is your current leader, Mitchell. I don't even know where he went. Oh, he's right in front of me. And guys, just so you know, I am going to have the chat pulled up so I can see it. So, Is there guys, a live score sheet? We have questions in yeah. the chat. Also, too, let's get a little more lively in the chat here. What's everybody think of the event so far? What do you think about this event in particular? I'm looking at ADL to see if we have a live score sheet to share with y'all. Why are y'all calling Cody pretty? <laughs> Josh Kalaluski, Cody Abel is pro belt clean. Yes. He would say that. Cody Abel. Josh, Josh would say that. Especially being an odd object. You want to know how himself. many problems I have with a belt clean? Zero. Zilch. Nothing. You don't even have a belly for a belt clean. Thanks. You know how people are like, you need a big belly for a belt clean. You and don't. Uh, I am 5'6 when I had hair, and I'm 195 pounds oh. in the off season. I can't oh. get a bigger belly. This is fast. You just got to be yeah. okay with it pinching you a little bit. Yeah, oh, yeah. Once oh, you get past that. All right, so I like the aggression. He's got a real good lean to it. Yeah. I will say, these in particular, these style Hoosable stones, you do have to pick a little more cautiously, whereas with those like rubber high temps, I really think you can kind of grip and rip a little more. Yeah, so. you can almost just keep falling through it. Yeah. Aw, uh, we have so much love for CJ in the chat. CJ has just been making the rounds these last two or three years, competing a lot, getting his name out there. Him and I actually talk almost on a daily basis, and he's actually taken an almost opposite approach of me of competing. I try to compete only a couple times a year, very measured. You know, to try and you know have my bet as many yeah. of my best days as I can. But then I have a friend like CJ, well, he's just going for it, and he's like, I'm gonna go up a weight class, gain some weight, gonna throw down, and I love that. It's actually informed me, even though I'm taking an off season this year. These next two years, I think I'm gonna kind of throw a little bit more caution to the wind and have a little bit more of the CJ approach. I'm All not right. gonna try and peak for more shows, but I I yeah. do think having certain set times of your athletic career, we're like, you know what? If we're invited or qualified, we're going to show up. Am I going to make like weight that. every time? Yeah. Not, maybe not. But Especially if there's less cost. Yes. But aren't you in prep right now? No. Are we not competing together this fall? No. Oh, we talked about no, this. No. You're I'm focusing not on the Arnold. March for the Arnold I Classic. I forgot. I forgot. You're all very welcome, by the way. Why did you say you're no welcome? No new comments. Y'all need to get better at these comments. This is lame. Where are the Bulge Bros? I, I want to see the Bulge Bros leave more comments. Oh, we are about to get some crowd involvement. Oh, are they doing a max carry for some free stuff? I guess so. First form guys have some stuff. They're going to do a oh, front, front plate, plate hold. hold. What's the plate? 
probably 25 pounds if we're pulling from the audience. I, I might take on some of these scrubs. Oh, I was going to ask you. All right, guys, just letting you know, we're kind of in the middle of a transition here, so we're having kind of a crowd event going on. We're going to switch to a commercial break. Um, yeah, so you're going to hear from our sponsors and and check them out. Zone Smelling Salts, Cerberus, Stronger Together. And we're just going to take a little bit of a break. Bridges the gap between individualized coaching and open source quality programming. Whether your goal is to use Strongman as your means of attaining health and strength, or you're a competitive athlete, Stronger Together gives you the means to reach higher. Stronger Together is year-round programming to help you achieve a higher baseline of strength and fitness to improve your life and your off-season training. Eliminate the guesswork with your training. Stronger Together is $25 a month and includes warm-ups, strength progressions, conditioning, and uses Strongman implements in every session. Operated and programmed directly by some of the most experienced Strongman athletes in the world, Stronger Together is here to make you a part of the team. We are bringing Strongman to the forefront of strength and conditioning, and we believe that we are truly stronger together. The Stronger Together program bridges the gap between individualized coaching and open source quality programming. Whether your goal is to use Strongman as your means of attaining health and strength, or you're a competitive athlete, Stronger Together gives you the means to reach higher. Stronger Together is year-round programming to help you achieve a higher baseline of strength and fitness to improve your life and your off-season training. Eliminate the guesswork with your training. Stronger Together is $25 a month and includes warm-ups, strength progressions, conditioning, and uses Strongman implements in every session. Operated and programmed directly by some of the most experienced Strongman athletes in the world, Stronger Together is here to make you a part of the team. We are bringing Strongman to the forefront of strength and conditioning, and we believe that we are truly stronger together. The Stronger Together program bridges the gap between individualized coaching and open source quality programming. Whether your goal is to use Strongman as your means of attaining health and strength, or you're a competitive athlete, Stronger Together gives you the means to reach higher. Stronger Together is year-round programming to help you achieve a higher baseline of strength and fitness to improve your life and your off-season training. Eliminate the guesswork with your training. Stronger Together is $25 a month and includes warm-ups, strength progressions, conditioning, and uses Strongman implements in every session. Operated and programmed directly by some of the most experienced Strongman athletes in the world, Stronger Together is here to make you a part of the team. We are bringing Strongman to the forefront of strength and conditioning, and we believe that we are truly stronger together. The Stronger Together program bridges the gap between individualized coaching and open source quality programming. Whether your goal is to use Strongman as your means of attaining health and strength, or you're a competitive athlete, Stronger Together gives you the The Stronger Together program bridges the gap between individualized coaching and open source quality programming. Whether your goal is to use Strongman as your means of attaining health and strength, or you're a competitive athlete, Stronger Together gives you the means to reach higher. Stronger Together is year-round programming to help you achieve a higher baseline of strength and fitness to improve your life and your off-season training. Eliminate the guesswork with your training. Stronger Together is $25 a month and includes warm-ups, strength progressions, conditioning, and uses Strongman implements in every session. Operated and programmed directly by some of the most experienced Strongman athletes in the world, 
Stronger Together is here to make you a part of the team. We are bringing Strongman to the forefront of strength and conditioning, and we believe that we are truly stronger together. The Stronger Together program bridges the gap between individualized coaching and open source quality programming. Whether your goal is to use Strongman as your means of attaining health and strength, or you're a competitive athlete, Stronger Together gives you the means to reach higher. Stronger Together is year-round programming to help you achieve a higher baseline of strength and fitness to improve your life and your off-season training. Eliminate the guesswork with your training. Stronger Together is $25 a month and includes warm-ups, strength progressions, conditioning, and uses Strongman implements in every session. Operated and programmed directly by some of the most experienced Strongman athletes in the world, Stronger Together is here to make you a part of the team. We are bringing Strongman to the forefront of strength and conditioning, and we believe that we are truly stronger together. The Stronger Together program bridges the gap between individualized coaching and open source quality programming. Whether your goal is to use Strongman as your means of attaining health and strength, or you're a competitive athlete, Stronger Together gives you the means to reach higher. Stronger Together is year-round programming to help you achieve a higher baseline of strength and fitness to improve your life and your off-season training. Eliminate the guesswork with your training. Stronger Together is $25 a month and includes warm-ups, strength progressions, conditioning, and uses Strongman implements in every session. Operated. I just found out that Cody's commercial did not include me, so I'm only a little bit hurt about that. But. Well, well no, there's a very simple. E We're done with you. Listen, we can't charge to see perfection. That, because that was ran for free, All right. I'd have to charge if you were there. All right, go back to it's bullying a, me. It's I a won't. premium Blech. product. Move All like right. a pro, Nancy. Let's talk about a company that you guys might not have heard yet. Pig Iron Metalworks out of North Carolina. Incredible strongman gear. I mean, if you haven't realized, strongman gear is either really expensive to find, impossible to find, or you find a genius who knows how to make it, yep. which is Pig Iron. Yep. So they've been making logs, circus dumbbells. They made a lot of blocks for OSG preps. Yep. They made a ton of really cool Viking press adapters yep. to use on your yoke uh, because they, Viking press was all last year. They adapted one of the side car deadlifts to be a front hold yep. car deadlift for the Shaw Classic for yep. Tim Buck. They made some anchor yoke bottoms to simulate for the Shaw. Yep. I'm sorry, for OSG. 
So they are the sponsor of this next event, which is the Sandbag Sandbag Sled Drag. Yep. So the guys are going to carry a 240-pound, 108-kilogram sandbag to a sled, run back, get a 260-pound, 117-kilogram sandbag, run that to the sled, bring the entire sled back. So with just the sandbags, that's about 500 pounds, 226 kilograms. But if we count the weight of the sled, which is about 150 pounds, it's 650 pounds or 294 kilograms. It looks like they're getting ready to, oh, all right, they're starting. Gonna be evil. Yeah, this event's gonna be gross. Um, I think what, oh, I didn't so, like that. So, I'm telling, what I'm gonna call right now is that the ground is slick enough that the finish on the sled is gonna be easier in terms of energy consumption, but if your feet are not dug in enough, you are gonna, we're gonna have that happen. Poor Chandler, yep. that's gonna suck. So for the Husafel event, we had to have these mats put down. That is an absolute safety concern right there. However, with this specific event, if we put the sled on top of the mats, Chandler's you're never gonna see the sled off. Move. You said he should take his shoes he off? He's about to try and take his shoes off. Were they going to let him? I don't know. I would also think that Converse would be a good move, but you never know what the floor really no. is until you get there. So it is sometimes good to have backup shoes. Yeah. Boots. All right, so he's up. Yeah. That's disappointing. That's very, very frustrating. And I know you know what that feels like. It, that death medley we did in 2021 at OSG was very much like that for a lot of people. Yep. That sled would not move. Yeah. Some people try and tacky the bottom of their shoes, but depending on what event There's, you go you to. You can do hairspray. You can use spit. I think. If there aren't rules against it. Yeah. Well, obviously. I think. I don't know if that. I, I wouldn't categorize that as the same thing as tacky. Um, like. At that point, it's again, it's kind of a safety issue. I think. So with an event like this, I've had similar events like this at multiple different venues. And what I do is I bring basically every different type of training sneaker I have yep. and I run sprints once I figure out the exact surface whether we have mats or not and I test it out in the shoe and I try to have a plan ahead of time um, sadly at the end of the day you're not going to know until the day of you and might sometimes not, not have, until yeah. right before so it's it's a variable in the sport that is is a challenge at times but you also have to take it on you as an athlete at these high level shows you have to have a plan for that um that is I, very true you hear about brian shaw showing up to world's strongest man with two or three bags of extra equipment and that's because he's got different gloves different yep. shoes different belts because he knows that and he's you know, not the only one sam beliveau yeah. does that too yep. she she jokes that one of her suitcases is almost always shoes because she carries so many shoes with that mindset. Yeah. And Andrew Clayton would say the same thing. Yep. He has retired, but now he's moved into a period of teaching younger athletes coming into the sport. And one of the things he talks about in one of his recent tutorials is if you don't have access to equipment, which I'm gonna call the floor equipment in this situation, yeah. the second you get to the venue, you need to put your hands on and make a plan based on what you're, you've been prepared to do in training and what you now have. Yep. What can you change? What can you adapt? How can you overcome? All right. well, that's just trying to put more advantages in your pocket, guys. You know, I encourage everybody that I coach, you know, I don't want you to miss any extra work and incur, you know, like a loss of income. But if you can get there Friday at check-in as opposed to early on Saturday and just get your hands on the particulars of the equipment or the floor, that's an advantage you should try and take it. Take it. That's one of those ask for forgiveness, not permission things yeah. for me. I just go touch it till they tell me not to. Yeah, 100%. All right, so we have, I think these might be wrestling shoes. They're definitely like a minimus style shoe. Yes, or the Opti, was it the Optimix? Remember Not those sure. ones? Yeah. Oh, we almost just held hands. And he's also going for a little bit choppier, not as big of poles. I think he had to do that based off the floor. Yep. You also saw some of the guys that annihilated that medley at 2019. Uh, they had their feet more uh, sideways as they're just straightened back. Um, I think that's not necessarily, doesn't really help the grip, but may, might give them a little more power. Depending well, on how your knees can handle it. Yeah, yeah. For me, it would come down to how my tibia could yeah. handle different pressures in yep. that setting. Like right now, I can't sumo deadlift as much as I could conventional because my tibia has limitations. Yeah. But everybody's different. That's 
Are we considering that finished? I think so. I, okay. I'm having a hard time because of the sun. I can't quite see the marker. I know. We're being blinded right now. I'm sure you guys can see how lovely and sunny we are. All right. Up next, we have Josh Langloy from the United States. Uh, okay. All right, we have Langloy coming up. Guys, if you want to get lively in the comments, let us know, especially with these last two, the Husiful Ladder and this uh, double sandbag drag medley, what is the grossest, most painful event you've had to do in Strongman? Drop it in the comments on the ADL live feed, and please let us know. You know, the fact that the first athlete wasn't able to finish the sled is probably going to start to impact the thoughts of other people. Yep. But, again, we are at a pro show, so a lot of pros will ignore that stuff and not yeah. focus on it. I... I, I I tend to think, unless you need to watch other athletes go to maybe learn something about if there's an unknown variable, most of the time you just need to stay in the back, stay warmed up. You don't really need to watch yeah. anybody. Yeah. I mean, usually your coach can just come back and say, hey, tell me the game plan. Yeah, this person hit this many reps. I need you to just do this. That's yep. your goal. That's yeah. what you're focusing on. Or not on. even telling you who did what, just telling you what's the job. The job today is six, this many reps. Okay, so he's squatting into it, but he's also pushing his left leg in front of him. Like he's trying to brace into that yeah. right leg. Yep. Really squat, which has to be uncomfortable, but he's doing it. One more. Oh, man. I don't know if they're going to give him that. I know we weren't able to give you guys the order after the Husafel and then the overall order, but I think after we finish this event, we're gonna make sure that we have the overall for you going into the final event, because that's when it gets real, real interesting. So these athletes did know they were doing this outside. Yes. However, they can't predict how sunny it's gonna be. They can't predict how hot it is. Yeah. And let me ask this. How many times have you gotten a chance to train sled not in a parking lot or not on a turf? More often than not. Oh, really? Yeah. I, most of my sled work has been outside. No, no, no. I'm, yeah, but I'm saying you're doing it on concrete, right? Yeah. You're doing it on something where you can grab the ground. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I'm saying you don't usually uh, have chances no. to practice inside an arena yeah. unless you work somewhere really cool. Yeah. You know what? I'm going to go work out on ice rink and just go out there and start. Oh, well, I guess it would be too easy because it would slide. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm sliding, but so is the sled. Yeah. All right, McBride's making easy work of it. Not a surprise. I think he's really going to try and make up time here because he's strategic. All right, Jacob. I'm going to be really curious if anybody goes barefoot. Okay, so what he did was he went and stepped on a towel and cleaned off his shoes real quick. I'm willing to bet there's alcohol in that towel. Like Jack make your... Daniels or Bud Light? <laughs> rubbing. Oh, rubbing. For the outside wounds, not the inside wounds. Got it. He probably went and stepped on that alcohol to dry out his shoes a little, but he is slipping. Yeah. However, he's a Navy veteran, so I know he has a lot more fortitude and grit. Yeah. Deeply ingrained in him. Yeah. I think he ran out of time there. Yeah. Yeah, this drag is proving to be a real problem. Do you think someone going barefoot is worth the gamble? So my feet are sweating right now. Nick O'Hare is barefoot. If that is... Oh. That might be the move, guys. What are they doing right now? Okay. If Nick O'Hare wins this event because he went barefoot, I'm going to be, I don't know what I'm going to be. Some version of excited, but also scared. Family live stream. Family live stream. Family live stream. Luckily. How is Cross going to feel about you talking about O'Hare this much? Jealous, probably. Listen, CJ lives in my heart. <laughs> Nick O'Hare is just in my eye line, okay? You can look. Looky, no touchy. Are your feet sweating right now? 
Quit flirting I, with the athletes. I'm they not, need to focus. Listen, you leave me and all my boyfriends. My friends. Never mind. I meant friend. Anyway. Framily. Framily. They're on, hey, they're I on mean, the really, that is why Cody's yeah. making all these comments. They are just such a tight knit group of boys, especially because the Schmedium boys don't have pro cards most of the time. Yeah, yeah. And not not as pro cards are seen at the moment. 80s and 90s don't have it. Yeah. We don't need to get into that discussion. But they also get dogged on a lot, too. Yeah. You see lightweight ladies get a lot of credit, yeah. but not men. All right, let's see what CJ's got. CJ's already. I'm having a really hard time not screaming into this microphone. That's why people are doing this yank method. I, I think McBride had the best strategy so far with that split squat pull. Yeah. Well, you're getting closer in. You're getting tighter up. But also, you have all these guys watching that stuff, and they can't just commit to something that worked yeah. for somebody else yep. in the heat of the moment. He's very, very close. We can't even see the line from where we are. I think he just finished. I can't, I can't tell if he finished or if he time capped, I'm going to be honest. No, he finished. Okay. And I think he, he set himself up for success there. So finishing this event is going to be a high score. Yeah. That's always how that works. Well. Winning the event is going to be a lot of points, according event. to Cody. Finishing the event. That's the beauty of one of these shows, because their elements against their predictions right now. They couldn't predict these things. We're going to see some shifts in how we thought it was going to play out, and especially how they thought it was going to play out. Yeah. But that's strong, man. Yeah. It is going to be so hot for them to do stones right here. Yeah. It's insanely hot right now. All right, who do we have next? Pierre Is that Champagne? 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 Barefoot? Barefoot. Is he barefoot? Barefoot. I wonder if that makes you second guess your steps a little more. I don't know. You lose all that protection you're used to. He doesn't seem to care. Nope. It's not slipping as much. Not slipping as much. Still a split but stance. Yeah, that floor is still going to have residual chalk and dust. And but McBride was pushing off his back leg, whereas it looks like Champagne's pushing off his front leg. So even though he's split, yeah. it looks like he's pushing from a different way. Yeah. And I don't know if it's benefiting him right now. We couldn't predict the sun affecting our visuals yeah. this much. He really is so close. What do we have going on in the chat? Any crazy All right, responses? it looks like... Um, worst event was freshly painted stone series outside in the snow with no tacky. Uh, we got a lot of people talking about athletes going barefoot in previous events. Rick Carroll uh, went barefoot at Nationals because of grip issues. Yeah. There are times when barefoot can be really dangerous. I can't remember the name, but a World's Strongest Man show where they did a truck pull, somebody's shoes came off, and his feet were absolutely shredded by the yep. time he was done. I just can't remember his name. Yeah. Somebody's asking if athletes can go again now that there's a towel I, that's absolutely a no. I don't even have to ask about that. Yeah. But I'm willing to bet that one of the athletes put that towel down, and it was kind of, you know, amongst themselves they decided. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Somebody said they did a stone series in the snow. No tacky. Yep. Gross. Oh. Thanks. I'm good. My first strongman show was during Hurricane Matthew. What year was that? 17? 2016. 16, yeah, right. it was the NC Strength Challenge. Who hosted that, Lynn? Lynn. Yo, you said that. Yeah, Lynn. that was my first first proper strongman show. I got to say, Lynn's local shows are more evil than his OSG shows yeah. because he has more to play with. He doesn't have to buy as much equipment, you know? Yep, Ben Donan's gotten started. All right, Donan is running. Ben Donan rocking the Air Jordans. Well, also dealing with a bunch of 
All right, here's where here's where it happens, folks. What's going to happen on this sled drag? Did you know that Donan has five world records right now? Yes. Four as a U80 and one as a U90. Yep. Just ridiculous. He's on a he's on a tear. Which is making me wonder how the deadlift went for the like internally for them. The way they were peeking and looking before. Yeah. All right, Donan has crossed the finish line. He is the new leader. I think I hear 49.27. Right, we absolutely do not have any athlete winning every event right now. And Abby was just telling the audience that if Donan stays in first for this event, he will now have two event wins. Which would be a first in this show. Yep. It just hasn't happened yet. All right, if you guys watching, Nick O'Hare being the veteran that he is, he's going out there wiping the floor off, going barefoot. I kind of love, kind of hate that they are tucking the handle in. So it's like yeah. you have to come and get it. Whereas other shows, you have to run around it to load your sled. My, my only issue with tucking it like that is that, and it's, you know, is it going to happen every time? No. Is it going to happen maybe every five to ten times? Maybe, though, is when you, like, tuck a chain and a, a handle like that, those chain links can kind of get... That's what I was thinking. Kind so of hung up on one another. And, pull again, it. that's an unfair obstacle for other athletes. That's also part of the sport. I don't know. Nick just almost slipped running back for his second bag. Yeah. I'm worried. No, he's got it. All right, let's All go. Right, let's see what happens. All right, a little bit of split stance. He's trying to switch which foot he puts pressure through. This is absolutely an event where the later you go, the more you learn. Yes. The towel coming out. Yeah. If there's rubbing hell on the towel, being barefoot, which we already know O'Hare was going to do it. But now he's seen the split yep. fight through different legs. This kind of is an event where you want to watch people because now you have a new element to deal with. Yeah. And you're trying to see what's breaking everyone else off. So exactly. if that was your idea, you're like, all right, let me see what's better. This is definitely an event that you need to see. You need to look at certain variables. Yeah. So you have to watch other people compete. And if you compete with these guys as much as you all do, you start to learn everyone else's leverages and you're like oh if that works for him i think that might work for me because xyz yeah. all right we're waiting on his time okay i think we still have don in the lead right now open the chat Let's see what's going on in the chat okay so we have two more coming out right now these are reordered based off the previous event not off not off the overall score just so y'all know so o'hare went third to last right here because he took third in the husafel run so now we're gonna have oh gosh um Was it Mitchell still? I think Connor's All right, Jim Mitchell's up next. Yep, we got Mitchell up Jim next. Jim Mitchell's been very consistent. Again, guys, we don't have the live scores on the exact results, so we are trying to keep the math going ourselves. So if we're a little bit off with some of that, we're sorry. We're doing the best we can. Um, so. Just letting you guys know that. So if we say something that conflicts with the scores put up on there, just go by the scores put up on the board. It's all coming from Cody. Whatever I say comes from Cody, so. You know, Mitchell has seemed to stay the most calm. Yes. And neutral throughout the show today. Oh, he almost tripped. Yep. I heard that little squeak. That squeak, squeak, squeak. Yep. It's also the same sound a bar stool makes right before a fight starts. Mm -hmm. 
Now you have all the other athletes that already went watching to see if he finishes. They're like, who's going to actually get it in different ways? Oh. A little more sideways. Okay. He's trying to use the side of his shoes yep. to catch with that rubber. Yeah. I got to be honest, guys. I am really glad I'm not doing this event on that surface. This Did, would be really frustrating. So we just saw him spit on the floor. Does that help? I've never tried. In theory, I don't know, man. I know people spit on the receiver gloves, yeah. and I've seen that make it stickier, but. It, it can, but I, this, yeah, this is, this is rough. That might, was that the fastest time? I. He might have won that. You asked that, me like I have an internal timer. We're, we're, we're doing the same thing. We're doing the we same are, math the here, same brother. Information. I've done more math than you. I've converted stuff. That's definitely stuff. true. I've converted all the kilograms to pounds. You're killing it. The human calculator. No. Don't go saying that because people will <laughs> think I'm smart. <laughs> Who are we looking at? Is this? This is a we bride. One more. This is either McBride or Cummins. I can't see. Cherry. cherry. Wow. Oh, I do have McBride on here already. All right. So Cherry won that Husafel event. So he is going to go last in this event. All right, Keith Cherry. Fast transitions. The way he carried that reminds me of Aaron Fondry for some reason. Yeah. Well, the hat, too. That, yep. Yeah. The snapbacks and tattoos. Yep. Long legs. Shout out to Fondry, who we wish was here. Shout out. Miss you, brother. All right, we're seeing the spit on the floor again. Yep. So it looks like sneakers are not, yeah, they're not it. No. Oh. Oh, he just got a groove. He got a good groove. If he stops. Oh, he stopped. He's getting the yoinks. Oh, that was beautiful. All right. So we still have Ben Donan taking that bat yeah, win on this wins. event. Which that should skyrocket. That should help him a lot in yeah. the points. Which technique did he use? His was like a, a split squat kind of pull. He just split and dug in, really. I don't think it was that yeah. different than anyone else's. Well, O'Hare was the one that was pushing yeah. left, right, very yeah. methodical. But yeah. that, I think that slowed him down just a little bit, whereas Donan had. I a think Donan move. was more of just rowing it instead of. He was using his back. aggression. Yeah. All right. So they are going to set up for the next event. And we actually have a special guest coming out in a second. All right, guys, the final event is sponsored by Sirius Still Fitness. It's going to be a head-to-head -head stone over bar at 330 pounds. It's easy. I'm easy, easy. Should be, right? Saturday morning wait. What does that even mean? Here we are. And now the We're one, in our special the guest. only, Corey Butler. I got to ask, are you going to change your last name? Are you going to be Corey Thompson? Newly engaged, Corey Butler. Newly engaged. Maybe do a hyphen? A hyphen yeah. There we go. Yeah, that's what Corey me and Butler Lane did. Thompson. Well, it's, it's a lot on an announcer that's so used to be like, Corey Butler, and then like, Corey Thompson. Anyway, what are you here to talk to us about? Uh, apparently, I'm here to talk to you about Barefoot. Yeah. Let's do that. Tell us about Barefoot. It. Uh, so, I think everybody probably has been exposed in some way, shape, or form to barefoot shoes, but uh, they're a minimalist, lots of minimalist shoes on the market. What I personally like about, I am an athlete for barefoot, um, but what I like about them is I've tried a lot of the barefoot 
or minimalist, I guess, shoes. I, what I like about barefoot is there's no shifting of my foot. Okay. Like I, I have an experience with shifting of my foot inside the shoe, which when you're moving and things, deadlifting, for example, is kind of a crappy deal. Like that's not really something that you want to experience. Yeah. So not only that's my favorite thing, but they're very grippy on the bottom. So I've gotten used to, it took some time to get used to doing yoke runs and farmer's runs in them, but I actually really enjoy moving events in them too. They're very, very sticky on the bottom. Um, foot doesn't move a lot in the shoe. They're super comfortable. I know a lot of people wear them for casual events, like day-to-day -day stuff. I haven't quite gotten to that, like on the concrete. I haven't quite gotten to that experience yet, but uh, they're great for all of my, my deadlift events, my moving events. I strict press in them, um, just depending on what the, the overhead event is. But even on stuff like that, I'd be curious to see how they hold up. You know, I was like just struggle. Yeah. I was just thinking, like, we did not see a single barefoot shoe come out there. Would you have opted to pull yours out in that moment? I would have tried. Like, during warm-ups and things, like, I certainly would have tested them on this surface to see um, how they, they stuck. But I bet they would work just as good, if not better, than a lot of the shoes. I, the barefoot method was, you know, it looked like it worked the best the and, and some good old spit on the ground. Um, but yeah, I, they're great people to work with too. They're super, super awesome. I like, I'm really wanting the, the white, I haven't gotten the white pair yet. They just that's released that. Pretty. Oh my God, they're beautiful. I'll ruin them. Like, Absolutely. It'll take one gym you session. Say, you save those for comp day. Yes, those will be a yeah. comp day only shoe. Yeah. But they have the high top and the low top. And I actually, um, Bobby and I went to Tennessee a few weeks ago and they have a hike, like a boot, like a, a hiking, I guess I used them for hiking, but they have like a work boot type shoe and those were fantastic for hiking. I can't say enough good things about them for that. But yeah, so barefoot, you know, check them out. Um, I happen to have a discount code if anybody wants, you know, some percentages off, there's always that for you. Absolutely, what's your Instagram and your discount code? Row Strong Woman, Corey Butler is the Instagram and just Corey, C-O-R-I is the spelling on it, but Corey gets, the, gets you the discount. Easy, easy. Nice. Check them out. I honestly want a pair so bad. The yeah, the white ones. Oh, it's like I know it's destruction waiting to happen. But they're so pretty. I might just tie-dye them. Yeah, there oh. we go. I don't know if anybody's done that. It's what I do as soon as I get something white dirty. I just tie-dye it. It's the way to save it. Yeah, so check them out, guys. Barefoot, they're a huge sponsor for us. Um, we're happy to have their support. They do a lot for us. They'll do a lot for the, the podium. I think get some good barefoot shoes, I think I heard. So check them out. Yeah. I need to get on the podium now. Yeah. I need to jump in the show. Yeah. What event last? Maybe not this one, but. No, jump in on the stone event. Yeah. Go ahead. Fine. What is your next show? Uh, tentatively, America's Strongest Woman. Shh. November. Yep, first weekend in November with the Olympia in Orlando. Yeah, so that's open class, right? It is. Yeah. Yep. Corey dominates at open classes. Yeah, you do. On the podium at Shaw Classic, the first year that they had women there, broke my feelings or broke my heart, hurt my feelings quite a bit. <laughs> Whew. Well, we didn't know who actually made the podium at first because they announced, wasn't it Nancy Butler? Yes. Yeah, Corey and I were waiting backstage for fourth place to come out and they called out Nancy Butler and we're looking at each other like, I hope it's you. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> it was me. <laughs> we love each other very much and very dearly and she is now my wife and will ever be my, my strongman wife. But we had no idea who was actually on the podium in that few seconds of yeah. mispronunciation. So are we hyphenating Butler Johnson Thompson? <laughs> yeah, what are you going to do? There's the question. There we go, yeah. Well, I can't take Thompson, obviously. <laughs> that would be inappropriate. Be You're the one that's going to have to have three a, last yeah, names. I don't think it's a thruple situation. Yeah, yeah that's going to be awkward. <laughs> that um, would be a what, a, what a, for America's Strongest Woman, what of the events for that, what are you most excited about to do? So I am the American Axel press holder. Yeah. No big deal. No big deal. Yeah. Uh, so there is a Max Axel in yep. that contest. Now, will I beat my record? Will my record hold? I don't know. I'm still recovering a bit from that bicep injury uh, last August. And yep. what was the record number? 271 point something. Six, I think. 271.6, I believe. It. So, so it's a Max Axel? It is a Max Axel. Um, that is the one I'm most looking forward to. And, of course, there's a Yoke Farmers medley in there, too, and I love moving events. So. Yep. I would say between those two, um, I don't know that I will perform on the axle as I would like just because of the how the recovery process has gone, but yeah. uh, definitely that yoke farmers I'm looking forward to. Yeah. She says that like she didn't go out to the Shaw and just dominate the yeah. sandbag events. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
Well, yes, you, you always dominate the yolk, but watching you do multiple sandbag events, I'm like, those are going to be the ones that are probably going to get to her head because that's how she hurt her bicep. That was an emotional event for me. That was super emotional. Like, yeah, I'm horrible. not usually a run around the floor screaming, but that was a... I was running around the well, floor. Well, no, coming, coming soon off of an injury yeah. at a big show like the Shaw Classic and doing the movement that caused your injury. And, like, let's be clear. Uh, bicep tears, you know, suffice it, suffice it to say they're they're common and strong, man. Um, let's not downplay that, though. Like, they require surgery most yes. of the time. Yes. And while the injury itself is not life-threatening, Anytime you're put under anesthesia for anything, that's a big deal. So coming, get, throwing yourself back into the arena at a high level, out the gate, saying like, one, I'm showing up, two, I've got to tackle the thing that made me have to go through this, like, that's a huge deal and speaks to you as an athlete and as a person. I so hats that. off to you, that's awesome. It was very mentally difficult, I am not yeah. gonna lie. Like I didn't pick up a contest weight sandbag until like two weeks before the actual yeah. event just because I was so, terrified like yeah. it was in my head it sucks so the fact that i i was able to finish that medley was enormous like, yeah, hats off to you that's awesome enormous for you the audience i mean you know me i care about injuries lately i was hyping up every athlete coming back from an injury and when you finished that event the crowd was just at their feet you know in love with you for being so proud of yourself because that was a moment where you deserve to have the run around and like I did it, I did it, and you did, and it was incredible. Yeah, it was super, I was super emotional. I, I had a good cry after that one, for sure. Yay. Yeah. Oh, we love a good combat cry. Yep. A lot of good stuff. So you're doing America's Strongest Woman. Are you thinking of going to the Arnold next year? I would like the invite. If the invite yeah. comes. Uh, Jan Todd, Rogue Ooh. Committee. Like, yes, I would absolutely love. So I was, I did compete at the Arnold Pro two years ago. Yes. Um, what a lot of people don't know is I was like four months recovering from cancer. I didn't know that until recently. Oh, yeah. wow. So I was like, uh, I want to say, actually, was it five? It was actually five five weeks from my last chemotherapy treatment. Or my last radiation treatment, excuse me. And am I wrong in thinking that you were one of the few that finished the wheelbarrow event and you finished the yoke ladder? I did not finish either of those. I got oh, to I'm the sorry. third wheelbarrow. I got to the third yoke, but I didn't finish them. Okay. No. That third yoke was 800 pounds, by the yeah. way. The most dangerous yeah. women's yoke I've ever seen. But so, it was incredible nonetheless. I would like to, I, you know, I, obviously I'm proud that I went. I'm proud that I finished. Um, but I would like some redemption. Like, I was obviously not at my best for that contest. So I would, I would like some redemption and get back on that stage for sure. How many Arnolds have you been to now? Uh, Pro Arnold just won. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but cumulatively. Amateur Arnold just won. My okay. first Arnold. I actually so went my did the deal. Yeah. That's awesome. That's so cool. Yeah. Yeah. It was pretty great. And yeah. that's where I actually transitioned into the open athlete because I yeah. missed my middleweight weight cut and uh, okay. uh, went open and ended up earning my pro card. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It's a crazy story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That happened this past year in the men's division. My friend Andrew yeah. on the Stronger Together coaching team uh, didn't make weight as an 80, went up to 90, and then won. Yeah. So – that's uh, I think that's the part of like strongman that needs to get more tapped into is the human side and the, the story and all that stuff. Like that's I don't want to call it drama because that sounds really like immature, contrived. But like Some those storylines yeah. need to be, you know, if the athletes are comfortable with it, those storylines need to be made public because yeah. it's going to help people get more into the sport. Yeah, I agree. That's awesome. though. Yeah. That's so cool. Now, where can people find? I know you did a podcast about your experience with cancer, and if that does help somebody, where can they find that podcast? Um, so I did that with Nick Best. Okay. Um, so that can be found on his YouTube channel, I believe, and uh, that's just happened here within the last couple of months. So go check it out. Throw Nick some love. Um, he actually had a similar situation, so we it was it was kind of an emotional chat for the both of us. But that was really where I came out with the information. Yeah. yeah. Which, which is a really cool part about talking about all these injuries because someone like you can share your experience when you're comfortable with it and now other people can use it as a way to help themselves if it if it does help them. I, I hope so. I hope so. I hope so. That's I think awesome. we're getting ready to start, aren't we? I hope, yeah. All right. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Well, Corey, is there anything else you want to say to close out uh, before you head off of here to anybody? Thanks for watching. Yeah. Support the guys. These guys have worked hard. It's awesome. Like, free live stream. Yeah. Support the sponsors. We've had some really, really great sponsors and support and love from them. And support these guys. Oh. Wait, what's the first pair of barefoots that people need to get? 
I like the low top Ursas. Those are my favorites. Okay. Yeah. Now we know. You've been told. Go follow yeah. Pro Strong Woman Corey Butler. Use right. her code. Yeah, Thank you. Bye. All right, guys. So we have, yeah. We just were given the final official scores. Woo! So we're going to go through those. All right, what's overall and what's. All right, so. Based off the last event. This is, these are the scores as of now going into the last event. Do you want to go through or do you want me to go through? No, I'm saying which is overall and which is just after the sandbag. This, these, these are the final scores going into this event. Right, and I'm asking you, is that just based off the sandbag or just we're at overall now? Overall, okay, I apologize. That's what Sorry, I'm that's what I meant. I these are the sure overall top the scores. Page. Sorry, guys. The sun's getting to me. I apologize. Get a little hot, a little toasty. All right, so we're going to go over the scores. The overall scores going into the last event, stone over bar, head-to-head. -head. Chandler has seven points in 10th place. Josh has nine in ninth place. Jacob has 14 in seventh place. Mark has 18th in seventh place. CJ has 25 in sixth. Pierre has, oh, there's a tie. So we've got a tie in fifth place. Keith is in fourth with 27. Nick is in third with 30. Jit, there's a tie at first place. Sorry, I'm not doing my homework. We've got a tie for first. At, I'm with, in shock. Yeah. The way this leaderboard has shifted so aggressively after each event. So we've got a tie at first with Jim Mitchell and Ben Donan. America versus France. That's not very... I mean, that's good, but it's not very good. It's going to get disgusting out here yes. for a second. And then we've got Nick O'Hare in third with 30. Man, wow. Sorry, guys. I was not expecting this, and I am legitimately I thrown told off. You. I, uh, yeah. I told you O'Hare was going to move from fifth. And now he's in third. Now he, well, actually, he's in second if you think about it. Yep. Because there's a tie in first. So he could very easily disrupt first the tie in first and we move himself up into a solid I'm second. I'm going to be honest. I would not have expected that to happen with these set of events. I'm like you know, legitimately thrown off. I'm not trying to be overly dramatic. We here. had two ties in the women's open at the Shaw Classic yeah. that we had to do. Um, we had to break it based off the sandbag throw. Yeah. Man. Okay. But with the way, man. Nothing is set in stone. So no one's got it in the bag, guys. Um, all it's going to take is a couple of people messing up and a couple of people doing really well, and the podium is not set. So this is this is really exciting. Do you mean to tell me that this could be anyone's game? Are you say, Am I saying that you're saying that you're saying that I'm saying it's anyone's game? Are you saying that anyone can win a strongman show based off different days, different events, how you recover, how you perform that day, how you show up that day? Are you saying every show is different? I'm saying that every show is different, guys. And that it doesn't really matter what you post on Instagram. doesn't really matter what your last show went. On any given day, anybody can win. And if anyone yeah. says otherwise, they're stupid. And if they tell me that I'm wrong, they can start paying my mortgage. I don't really care. So, man, I am I'm actually like, sorry, I'm having a hard time doing commentary because I'm really fired up about this finish. I just can't see anymore. We, we, guy, also, to be honest, we're having a hard time seeing because of the sun and the glare. Like We're not trying to complain. We're just trying to communicate no. with you guys. We can't see a dang thing, and it is right in front of us. I mean, there's a sign in front of us. but Nancy, how about you explain how the scoring works on this head-to-head -head stone situation? So from my understanding, well, not from my understanding, they have 30 seconds. Within the first 15 of those seconds, they do have to get the stone in their lap. So if they don't have it in their lap by the first 15 of those 30 seconds, they're done. I'm pretty sure who is out there right now. Who are we starting with? Because that's going to tell me a lot. Okay, Chandler. So Coddle is out first because he is currently in 10th place. So he's going to start throwing the stone. And when he falls out, I'm sorry, he's giving it to Josh. And Langloy is going to send right, it back. Get started. And as a person falls out, the next person on the leaderboard jumps in. So we've got 10th and 9th place out there right now. So they could affect each other's placings. And then when one of them ultimately can't keep going, the 8th place person is going to jump in. So it's truly last man standing. They yeah. go head to head until they cannot anymore. I think the biggest 
and most memorable event was the 2020 Arnold, where Fithin and Olga Lashuk yes went head to head. I want to say it was a 245 pound stone. I think it was like something like 20 or 30 reps. Well, Lashuk won, but Fithin finished. I think she had like 27 reps. Yeah, and she won that event. Yes. So she, I think she pulled herself onto the podium. Yes. But Lashuk still took it. And that was a, sh a show where they, that was the pro lady side of the 2020 Arnold. Yeah. They were like, okay, we should have picked a heavier stone. This was too light for this rep fest. Because it took a while and they couldn't just tell them to stop. Yeah. Also, if go. I remember correctly, Aleski Novikov and Trey Mitchell's first debut at World's Strongest Man, they had a stone off. Yes. And Trey Mitchell edged out Aleski going into the finals. And that was when Trey was first coming up. Yep. And now he is just, I mean, he's won he's the Shaw of, twice. He's one of the dudes. One, one of, of the, the strongest men in the world. Planet. Not that he wasn't before, but now it is solidified. Oh, my goodness. Watching him and Brian Shaw go head-to-head -head last year at the Shaw Classic, the final event, Stone Series, he got the last stone just a few seconds before Shaw. And it's yeah. like, you know, the whole crowd's screaming and yeah. living that moment. Trey's an easy athlete to get behind. I mean, most of the He's athletes so are, nice. but Trey, Trey being that he, he he lives down in Texas, trains in a barn by himself, your heart goes out to him because most of us, that's us, you know? He, he's a we good, good you know, hard southern boy. He doesn't have, like, a big YouTube following compared to some of these other guys. He's just a dude training and putting in the work. I mean, you see that with um, Cherry and Mitchell. We got hardly any social media presence for them, and they're just dominating yeah. out here. Yeah. These people aren't worried about who's following them, who's no. liking their they stuff, their They got a discount brags. code to Hawk, which is fine if you do. But they're not really worried about These guys are probably, you know what they're probably worried about? Going to work, taking care of their family, and then getting yep. into training. I mean, we'd be hypocrites if we were making fun of that because we both use social media yeah. to promote what we do in strength Me, sports. There, there's, well, I think that's all to say that there's no wrong way. No. You know? Unless you are overtly acting like you are always going to be the bee's knees. Yeah. But no, a lot no, of these no. guys know that it is any person's show at the end yeah. of the day, so they try not to come into it too cocky, but they come in confident, level-headed. Confidence and arrogance are two very different things. Yeah. All right, so we already have – uh you wrote the first thing. So we have Coddles out, but we still have Josh going, and now we have McBride in. And this one's a hard event to assess as a spectator because you see someone coming in and someone coming out. And when you see the person fail, you're thinking, oh, the next person's beating them. But it's not consistent. Like, it's not 1-1, one, 2-2. One, yeah. Two, two, because Langlois is going to have more points right now. He's yeah. been doing it, it this longer. This event can be a little, if you're not pretty seasoned in watching the sport, it yeah. a little confusing. Yeah. When I reference that final stone battle between Lashuk and Fithin. Fithin went up, I want to say, with three or four girls before the end of yeah. that series. Like, she just kept going. But it's your cumulative reps yes. that, that matters. And it's all about the timing, too, yeah. because you're, you're not given a break. You're given 30 seconds. The next person's given 30 seconds. Then you go again. So now we have McBride and CJ. CJ. But doesn't that mean we skipped... Mark, like, based off my calculations, now nah, that doesn't matter. Oh, CJ missed the rep. All right, he's out. My heart goes out to him. I've been there. Yeah, but we know that CJ's going to go home. Rewatch all this footage and see where to improve. Yeah, a, a good 100%. athlete always does that. Yeah. It it can be very painful to rewatch your shows. Yeah, especially but you if got you didn't to. perform how you thought you would. Yep. And I can say that knowing that Cross definitely thought he had more in the deadlift. We know that. Yeah. But he's going to use this as a learning experience. It's tough. Yep. But it's useful. All right, Pierre La Champagne, first rep. All right. How do you feel about events where you're head-to-head? -head? And I, I don't necessarily mean battling with the same implement, but, you know, like where they position you to be looking at your competitor in the eyes, whether you're crossing them on a yoke run or what. 
I honestly don't care. Yeah. I don't pay attention to them. No. And I like the fact that if I can turn on my RBF or like zone out in front of them, if it has the slightest chance of intimidating them, I'm going to use that too. Yeah. I'm going to allow it. I definitely, I, I'm going to do my best to do my job. It doesn't matter. But there is something about when you're, when you're doing an event that you can, whether it's reps or for time, and you can sort of pull away from your competitor at that very end, it 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 kind of kicks in that survival mode, yes. you know, like a bear's chasing you. And some of my like most loudest celebrations have been when I've edged out a lot of guys. I mean, when you're doing just a static event or an event where you're not necessarily facing each other, yeah, you don't even know they're there. Once you're in the zone, yep. you're in the zone. However, if your tiebreaker is now a farmer's run, yes. you're gonna see when they finish, yep. you know? Unfortunately, I saw the car to my right park right uh, before I broke my leg, and I thought, I'm almost done, and I was not. And for anyone that doesn't know, Nancy went into the finals at Worlds this past year in first place, had a wildly freakish accident, broke her leg in, on the yoke, zeroed the, the last events, and still came in fifth. I don't claim that. I actually, well, I am very. I don't really give a crap. That. I'm okay with it because, like, well, I have to be okay with it because it qualified me for the next year. Yeah. But I will not say that I took fifth place. I, I do get not, it. Just in the same way that the girl that did win, there was some heat on her. Not, not even in a. There shouldn't have been. No, there's, pre there's always pressure. Questioning it. Yeah. And I, you know, I and a few other people were like, "You finished the show. You finished in first. You earned yeah, that. You won it. You earned first. They, I did not finish the show, so that is why I will not claim that I took fifth. Yeah. If that makes sense. I mean, I get it. But I also yes. think it's a testament that you zeroed the last events and still placed or your points left you in fifth. I, d I appreciate that. Thank you. So shut I'm just, up. No, shut just, up. I'm just Take explaining it from my perspective. All right. Champagne is still going, Yeah, guys. I know. Cherry's probably on his second or third at this point. Yeah. And Champagne's knocking out now. Champagne's yeah. probably the one that was in for the longest. McBride was in there for a really long time. Then we had Champagne. All right, Keith Cherry, Nick O'Hare. Oh, how do you feel about O'Hare jumping in? What do you, say again? I just feel like O'Hare, I don't want to say it gets forgotten, but people forget how much intensity he has. Well, I think they also he's forget that he's, he's a fired up, intense competitor. He's yeah. also insanely seasoned. He is, like, like just coming from fifth to third in one event, like that's a huge deal in a show like this. Yeah. And I know we've seen a lot of shifts. He's not the only shift, but no. to me, I see him kind of overlooked sometimes. Yeah, I, I would say that's right. He's like, he's at all the big shows, and he's always in the mix. He, uh, you hear he's his on social lot. media. He's maybe not the flashiest, and you know that's just honestly with the sport of strongman growing. The, the, the athletes that have more presence and do well, whether they do better than others, they're always going to get a little more attention because it's it's easier for the organizations to leverage their success. Yes. And I understand that. But um, I think at the end of the day, the athletes that do well are always going to get the credit they do deserve. It's just in those little, the little finite details. Yeah. You know, but I mean, no. we were just talking about Keith Cherry's hardly on social media. Yep. You have Jim Mitchell hardly on social media. And they are just knocking it out of the park. I got to say, Champagne might be my most, like, voted MVP for this show so far. Yeah, I, I, I'm really stoked on, on Jim Mitchell. I mean, I'm stoked on everybody. I'm friends with a lot of these guys. Absolutely. Um, Jim Mitchell just being someone I didn't – I'm going to be honest, no idea who he was. And just coming in hot as a pistol, staring every, staring each event down like a, like yeah. a rabid dog. I'm a fan. Whether I yep. would have been a fan whether his results put him in tenth or in first, I like that attitude. I um, mean, you see it in Coddle too. Coddle is probably one of the lighter guys out here. Yeah, and I don't say that as a diss. No. And then we have well, Coddle's actually one of the really young guys, but Ben Doan is our youngest one. We're yeah. pretty sure. Yeah, and he's currently our leader. Yep. Do you like a belt on a stone? Absolutely not. Yeah. I, I like. Tried trading I don't in mind a, shorts once yeah. and that hurt. I like. I like a soft belt under the shirt, but I don't like a hard belt. 
Soft felt at most. Raw all the way. I tried briefs for a little while, but I think I'm going back raw. I just, I think I'm too into the pain that comes from stones now. Well, it kind of also tells you like where to put the stone. Yes. Oh, it hurts here. It's in the right yeah. spot. I know I've had a good stone run when I have just insane marks up and down my yep. clavicle. Yeah. When I've got more tears and rips on my forearms than my biceps, I know I was doing it right. I can't tell you how many times I've gone to work and people are like, oh, you have some kind of rash. I'm like, yeah, I have a rash that's perfect on both forearms. Yeah. <laughs> we All still right. have Cherry and O'Hare going. And you can tell they're using this 30 seconds very, very well. Yep. They're both spending that first 15 seconds in the load and then they can sit there with it in that second half of the 30 seconds which is really nice for them because a lot of people can sit with it in their lap catch their breath and think about how they're going to triple extend and explode through the top yeah. like nick's doing it real well i'm pretty sure nick is our current leader okay all right and cherry's definitely inching up behind him yeah. Nick O'Hare rocking the old school Reebok lifters. I just want to make a note of that. As a former CrossFitter, very appreciated. Do you do stones and lifters? Uh, stone to platform, yes. Object to shoulder, I've actually been opting for just uh, sneakers just because this is going to sound really contrived. Um, I feel like it's just different enough trying to get something to your shoulder that it it doesn't the position need the my same. hips need to be in is just different enough that being in sneakers is better. I get that. You yeah. also don't have to dip and drive the same way you would because it's not a circus dumbbell. Yes. With a circus dumbbell, you're going to have a full ability yeah. to dip and drive, but with a sandbag, you're not going to be able to like. You know? Also, with like say a, with a heavy object to my shoulder, like if it's a ladder, like the last the last object in the ladder. I'm probably going to have to work up my torso a little bit more. So yes. I'm going to have to stay in that bent position. And the lit with lifters, it's not, it's you actually. You can't get that lean the same way yeah, in that as good. static position. Yeah. With a log, you can get the lean because it's so quick. Yep. All right. We got Cherry taking a second. Oh, my goodness. Jim Mitchell looks like he's got plenty left in the tank to keep going. The way the live stream perfectly cuts across the yoke, it I looks like, it. like they're throwing it into the volunteers' hands every yeah. time. It's a beautiful live stream. This is the best way to watch a stone to stone. Look at that. Nick's triple extension is fantastic. Yeah. You tell Nick's getting tired, though. Yeah. This is the best way to end a show because your back is going to be smoked. Moped. You want to check the video comments? See if anyone's yelling at us. And if you guys have any hot questions you want us to answer. Yeah, or guys, leave some can questions. Answer, to, oh, sorry. Guys, the weight of the stone is 330 pounds. I apologize if we didn't wow. say that enough. We said it at the opening. We should have been reiterating. Weight of the stone, 330, 330 pounds. pounds. Which I believe is about 149, kilograms. one, how much? 149 kilograms. 149 kilograms. Yeah, you did say it, but we didn't hype it up enough. Yeah, sorry, guys. We got Mitchell being called a silent assassin in here. I love it. I like it. Twelve at three hundred and thirty pounds. Who's on twelve, Nick? Did you see that live stream pause for a yeah. second? It was a pretty sick slow mo. Yeah. I think Cherry traded out with Mitchell, and now Mitchell is definitely second. O'Hare's not giving up. I can already tell so, that. So from the lap to the load. Do you keep the stone as close as possible, or do you kind of like to have that distance so you can sort of rock it into and up your torso? Do you know what I mean? I get it here, and I just extend and throw. I don't okay. think I've ever had you room. You don't do that sort of rolling momentum where, where people will no. create space in the hip? No. Actually, lately, so I have to stop doing one motions because it's driving my coach crazy, but I've been doing this thing where I – Pick it to my lap and almost like a basketball, I like bounce it in my lap before I slap my hand solid and extend through it. Yeah. It's this weird, I don't know what it is, but it feels so good. Okay. I love the way triple extensions on Stones feel. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah absolutely. These guys are duking it out. Look at that. That's why we're talking so much. Man. I mean, they're just killing it. What are we going to say? Oh, they got if another rep. Take a screenshot of O'Hare 
right as he's got the stone over the bar, but before he lets it go is basically picture perfect strongman triple extension. I also like that Mitchell is taking his time, not rushing anything, but staying cognizant of the clock. You know, we did an amateur show this morning right before this event, and I don't think we even got to a 300 stone. I think the no. top stone was 275, and the most reps was probably eight. Yeah. And that was real grueling. Yeah. Like, and good. probably for athletes that are a lot bigger, too. It was, yeah, it was a heavyweight. Yeah. And that's definitely not a diss at those guys. It's just no, a separation no. between well, the pros and the amateurs. Well, it's also the difference between pros and amateurs. It's there. It's real. All right, Why are you waiting go. at people like you know who's here? I know some people. You I'm don't from know anybody. down here, Dagnabbit. All right, so I feel like that's the first rep that Mitchell has kind of skid the crossbar bit. I, and I wonder if that's a that. sign of fatigue or just a technical error. How messed Whereas, up is his stomach going to look after yeah, that belt? Whereas Nick has been clearing pretty well. Let's see. Yeah, so Nick is basically clearing the bar in terms of height well before he puts it over the bar, yep. which I think on a on a stone over bar is the smart move because the, the crossbar of a yoke is so slick, it's easy to miss. It is. It, it's like if you are half an inch too far from the bar when you go to throw the stone over and you hit that crossbar center or where it's real rounded instead of hitting the top of it, it'll roll underneath you and come back at you yes. before you can realize it and kind of relap. All right, Nick. Nick's Another actually one. using that grip shirt really well. Yeah. Most people don't use grip shirts well in this So event. this is the first rep that I feel like is Nick's showing fatigue. Also, I want to talk about the fact that this is one of the big separators of strongman compared to all the other strength sports. This is not a one-rep sport. This is a strength capacity sport. This how is long, endurance right here. Yeah, yeah. How long can you hang on into that 75 to 90%, 95% range of your capacity? And that's what strongman is. It's not one reps and all that stuff. We have those events sometimes, but it's a strength capacity sport. Yeah. How long can you hang on? How long can you dig in? This is awesome. This is the kind of show where you go home and you're sore for weeks. Oh, these guys are wrecked. Is that a question? Are we at 20? I, we very I, well I, might be. I mean, between the two of them, we're well over 20. All right. I just heard number 18 for Nick. 18 reps at 330 pounds. After. For a 198-pound right dude. So on the second to last one, I saw Nick's left side shift he's in. He's tilting just a yeah, bit. Yeah, you can tell he's either got How many do you think a he's QL got left? that's sore. Oh, uh, that's tough. That was clear better than any of the last yeah. few reps. Mitchell's. Well, I mean, but you know he's how, looking tired. You know how when Bobby goes to press a heavy log, sometimes you're like, I don't know if he's going to get it or not because his, his grueling face looks the same either yeah. way. Yeah. That's what I'm getting from Mitchell right now. Dude, Nick is smoking this. O'Hare's lower back is on fire. That's all I, Here's the thing. I can assess I don't think that it based is. off his... I think he's in the zone right now. I think yes. about an hour from now, he's going to die. But I think once he gets to the top of the extension, that's when his lower back is like, I can't thrust all the way through. Maybe, yeah. And it's looking a little bit like that. I don't know. Mitchell is just... Let's let some other guys go. Dude. Leave some reps for the rest I of everybody. Know. Whole. I'm doing really doing my best not to cuss. But holy crap. You haven't yet, so you're doing good. He is not stopping. This is like a moonshiner out running the cops in the 40s. This is freaking awesome. Somebody just said, if you do a Derek Owens show, you can't take your shoes off. Yeah, the way Derek they Owens did. is real particular. You have to wear some type of shoe. He's not into the socks thing, and he's, like, adamant against bare feet. Yeah. Okay, so Mitchell just turned around for a second. I thought he was waving off. He is no. not. So we still have 330 pounds. I'm not sure if Mitchell's looking hot to keep going. Dude. This is, this is and, awesome. Yeah, and we're not even doubting them when we say this. We're basing this off what we think it feels like for them. Yeah. You know when you do a heavy lift and you're like, how did that look? How did it feel? The amount of strain that these guys are going through and have gone through, the accumulated work right now is crazy. 
Oh, wow. So that was 18 for Mitchell. Just took a little nap. Just had to take a little nap, a little stone nap. We're good. Now, they're actually, I, know this, I think they're assessing whether or not he's going to stay in. He, I know this is going to sound rough, and I know it's last man standing, but if he's out and the time's gone, the time's gone. He's out. Yes. That's. Oh, yeah, see, there we go. They're bringing in Donan. They're going to make sure yep. he's okay, but Mitchell's out. He exceeded the time. Yeah. I know he, like, fell I think out they of have, it, but that's, that's the yeah. sport, guys. We have an EMT coming to check him out right now, and O'Hare is just still knocking it out of the park. And now Donan, our current leader. Oh, no. Oh. He still he has recover? time, though. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. He does not. Oh, if it falls, you're done. Wow. See? Just just a simple All right, moment so Nick like that. Beat. Nick's still going. They're going to bring in. But if Nick beats Jim and Ben. But they never brought out Mark. I, wait. Okay. They're bringing... All right, so Donan did not stay in. He missed that first one, and unfortunately, that means he's out. I don't know how many Nick's going to have left. Why does Nick need any more? I don't he know. I don't know what they're doing, to be at this point. Uh, full disclosure, guys, this is not the event's fault. The head-to-head -head stone events always throw me off. I always get... I'm easily thrown off by the results and the pointage. I think what's happening here is they're trying to get him more reps to see if that, because he still has time and he hasn't knocked himself out, if he can get more reps and add even more points to his. No one's going to be able to beat his cumulative points. Oh my gosh, the way he just walked away, his he's like, ugh. Yeah. He's going to have that wobble going on for days. Somebody get this man a hot bath and a McDouble. Holy shnikes. All right, guys, so here we are. We're back. Holy Guacamole. Crap. Guacamole. Holy hat on a shelf. I don't even know. Uh, Nick O'Hare got 24 reps at 330 pounds against the entire field. Um, yeah. We had some guys miss. We had some guys fall out. Um, I could try and do the math. I'd be wrong, but I. he beat the guys ahead of him that were tied. I, I believe he should at least be in second based off our calculations. I would still say podium for sure for Nick. Yeah, I really don't I don't want to make any false predictions, but I think that guarantees that he's beat Ben because Ben got no reps. Jim hung on and fought the longest, so it's where that's going to be Yeah. I can't math, so full disclosure, I'm not even going to pretend that I can So yeah. When is the next when live, is the next show? live show? Um, I think Pro Strongman League is getting ready to announce the women's 82 for the spring of next year. But other than that, I, I'm not sure I think if I know the, the next year is, so. Yeah, I, I'm not sure exactly. Um, we, we do have some America's Strongest open and weight class shows coming up. Yeah, there are some other shows through some other organizations. Um, you know, Strongman Corporation Nationals is coming up in three weeks. Is cost chaos doing any um, weight class? I think, I believe chaos is shaping up for an 80 kilo show sometime oh. next year. Okay. I probably shared that too early. That was told to me. If I did, sorry. I got a big mouth. I don't know. I don't know the dates or the criteria. Whatever. Get over it. 
Also, sorry, I don't mean that. Invite me. Anyway, um, so we've got Strongman Corporation Nationals coming up. We have the lightweight men's America's Strongest Man with America's Strongest Woman happening in November, two weeks after that. Then, official Strongman Games, which is the World's Strongest Man and Woman title for Masters and Weight Classes, the Men's Open uh, Podium, get to go to Giants Live, which gives them a shot at the World's Strongest Man, the TV show, the thing that got us all into the sport. So the next the next uh, 60 days, there was a lot of high-level competition coming up. Is there any, I mean, I know that you and I are going to be either at, attending, or competing. What have you got going on the next couple of weeks? I am currently in prep for the official Strongman Games, and that is my sole focus at the moment. You hear that, guys? She's getting ready I'm going to win. Back to finish what I did not finish last year. All good. There is no car this year. I wonder why. <laughs> yeah. If that's my fault, uh, everyone's welcome. Well, I mean, everything's your fault. Anyway, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Ironic to say from the person flirting with the athletes the most. It's not. Listen, Where is your wife? She's about to show up mad. All right. Mad so obviously we can't tell you guys the final. Yeah, results. we're not gonna try. I mean, I could try and do, run some numbers, but full disclosure, guys, I I'm not good at that. I'm really not. Um, we're gonna try and hang on a bit to give you the official results. Um, I there's definitely gonna be some shifting. I don't um, think we will be giving out podium because they're going to want to keep it secret for the excitement of the actual podium. Yeah. Because if we say it here, y'all are just going to text the boys immediately and we can't have that. Yeah. You guys are getting real fiery in these comments, Lord Almighty. Anyway, we're not going to touch on some of that. I'm sorry. You can turn on there. You're just too big, bro. Uh, guys, we want to give a shout-out to all our sponsors. Uh, Odd Objects, Hossware, Ro uh, Roanoke Valley Harley-Davidson, Barefoot, First Form, Serious Steel Fitness, The Noak Training, Dude Wipes, ADL Live, Stronger Together Training Program, presented by me, Andrew Hainis, Ross Remillard. Uh, did Cerberus. Hoss, did Hossware make all these shirts? Hossware did all the shirts. Hossware are just taking over the comp shirt game. So hats they off really to them. Have. Good good crew of folks. I've met them a couple times. Uh, seems like they're real invested in being a part of the sport, not just capitalizing on it, which I think is important. And there is like a difference between that. I mean, uh, they put athlete countries on top of their names at this yeah, show, and I, I think awesome. that's sick. Yeah, it's awesome. Names on shirts, just like that's, that's a huge that, favorite I, for me. I think it's the – Shows on top of like having expectations and a result you're trying to work for, they are experiences you're trying to build on and little things that shows do to make them more memorable. Something as simple as the shirts having your last name on it and the flag, yeah. whether it's your state flag or your country flag. I mean, you or, see it in the NBA NFL Hall of Fame. Yeah. They have their shirts hung up and it's like, I want that. Yeah, exactly. I want that. All done. that kind of stuff. We're all just making memories here, whether we're gunning for a world record or a world title or whether we're just doing our first and only show. Like, that's what that's what this stuff's about, um, and I think that like it's easy for us to forget that, especially when you're doing the high level shows and you you're you're in tunnel vision and all you're thinking about is like, all right, next week I got to do this and this and this, I got to make weight, I got to show up, and all these other things. Like all this stuff is an opportunity; it's not an obligation. No one's making us do this. No one's making you do this. Now, you should take the training and the and the commitment serious. But you guys need to remember that we don't have to do this. We're opting in to do this. So it needs to be rooted from a place of enjoyment so that when it gets crappy, you're doing it for the right reasons. If you're just doing it because you think you can win, that's cool. You're not going to last. And personally, I don't think you should be welcome as a member of the community. You also might not share the love that long if you're yeah. only, if you're not able to make friends and grow in the community and give back to the community. You might find yourself not you're welcome. You're going to burn out. You'll be out in like three to four Loving years. the community. Tops. Because, uh, you know, hobbies like this, in terms of resources, they're going to take more than they give. So what Absolutely. you get back is not tangible. You know what I mean? Like the money Actually, we spend on this. I feel like I've spent thousands in this sport and I don't care. No. The 
relationships I've made in this sport, the experiences, the lessons I've learned, the growth as a person. I'm not a perfect person by any means, but all of those things are well worth all the money I've spent in this sport. Yeah, man, like all the blood, sweat, tears. Yeah, like the fact that I transitioned from being someone that was sedentary. I I didn't lift weights until I was 24. I started lifting weights to get in shape and be fit. I never played sports as a kid. I did CrossFit because I thought it looked cool, and I, I competed in that for a minute. And then when I discovered Strongman, specifically lightweight Strongman, I remember saying to my coach, all I want to do is go to the Arnold. And then last year, making the finals again, and then standing on the podium, getting to stand up there for the Ukrainian deadlift and just have those two seconds to look out, take my breath, and then strap in and hit the reps, like, that means everything to me. Yeah. You know? And as your and friend, even, it's very exciting to see yeah. your friends do those things. And then, like, like also screaming for you. Getting able to do this, get to come and hang out with you and get to see my friends. Like, because you live in DC, I live yeah. in Richmond. We train very different lifestyles. Yeah. So we don't get to just train with each other all the time. No. I mean, that's part of the craziness of yeah. the sport. Like, no one's going to last or do anything that matters in this sport unless they love it. And even if doing something that matters quote unquote it's not this it's not static you know what i mean like if you're the person that's like you know what strong man strong woman is how i just stay in shape and i do the shows that are within an hour of me personally i think you're more important than the people that are on top of the podiums at yeah. worlds at the arnold because you guys are what make the sport continue and grow maybe yeah. the, the no I, I was gonna make a joke about that but i i i, I have to appreciate the sentiment but the fact that you're talking about that, do you have local shows to mention right now for people? Absolutely. Any show in the Virginia area put on by Brute Strength, by The Barn, and Rutler Glen, all the shows put on in Maryland by Coliseum, uh, the, the shows put on by Strength Haven and Chantilly, um, those events do more to carry the sport of strongman through over a long timeline are, those are what matters. And, yes. like, obviously I'm naming gyms that I know because they're what close to me. But, like, shout out to – I got into Strongman in 2016 in North Carolina. Shout out to Spider Strength Gym owned by James Deffenbaugh. That guy does so much for Strongman. Shout out to my old gym in Durham, North Carolina, the owner, Jack Wigan. I showed up to the gym as a CrossFitter. A month later I said, I think I'm going to do Strongman. Jack went and bought me a log, a dumbbell, a frame, a far without I didn't ask him. Wow. He just did it. He's like, You're a guy who I care about as a member and as a friend, and I want you to do that yeah. stuff here. I don't want you to not have to do it anywhere else. And he he even said, he's like, I'm not gonna make any money off of this. I just want my friend to do well. Like Yeah. Isn't it crazy how nice people can yeah, be in the sport sometimes? And the world's a pretty dark place. So you guys need to remember to shine a little bit of light in it, man. Yeah. I gotta jump off what you were just talking about there's some really great shows happening in denver in november um jacksonville north carolina one of the best places for local shows in my opinion because the north carolina strongman scene is ridiculous insane, insane. south carolina's got a good scene too and nevada's actually got a really crazy scene i did not know about till the shaw but jacksonville has some coming up at the hometown strength gym owned by tim buck that is a gym that opened up, of course, after I left the town because yep. they hate me. But Greg Potoy is also somebody that puts on amazing shows at really just different venues all the time. Yep. And he is probably going to be putting on a really big show here in a few years. Oh, is he? It's a secret. Oh. It's a secret. It's a secret. Well, and then. then I can't think of the specific date, but the Barn Gym in Ruther's Glen, Virginia, is putting on some... Oh, my goodness. They're actually putting on a bunch of Highland Games shows this yes. year. They're trying to put a show on as frequently as possible to just expand the sport. Yeah. Oh, they're doing one in December. Yeah. I can't it's, think of the name of it. It's, it's evil. Death, death member. It's evil. The description like sounds centric. awful. So what I like about our friends at the barn, shout out, is they're doing shows frequently, but what they're doing in consideration for the athlete's health is that they're they're picking really niche, unique events that aren't going to beat up the athletes. So they're doing a good job. They're not just like caving in the athletes' bodies every two months. <laughs> they're doing they're doing like grip events or Highland events. So shout out to those guys, Haley and Matt. Yeah. We really appreciate you guys. The weight room is a really great spot that I train out of in Richmond, Virginia. They don't host 
shows. I don't think anymore. Not in a long time. Not in a while, yeah. but they do usually have a lot of resources on their website for yep. shows that their athletes are doing. I'm trying to think of other stuff right now. There's just so much. You know what? I don't know why we didn't start here. Iron Podium. Iron Podium. Used to be only USS shows, which is United States Strongman. However, Iron Podium has expanded now. It's USS shows. It has some PSL information sometimes, depending on the promoter. And then it has Strongman Core information as well. So you can either go to the USS and Strongman Core websites to start for your first local show, or you could go to Iron Podium and sort by your location, date, etc. Yep. Go get your feet wet. Go meet somebody. Go grow your community yeah. and touch some implements. Yeah. And if you guys are curious, like, how do I get into strongman? What I do to strongman equipment? Blah blah blah. blah. Is that what Here's people sound like to you? Yes. That's how he it thinks is. all novice people sound. Bar, apparently, bar, 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 bar. they're not novice. They're just they're novice. If they're, they don't know what what they're doing yet, that's novice. I, I. Do you know what novice means? I can't read good. Okay? I know there aren't pro cards in your category, but do you know what the different levels are? <laughs> Okay, final scores. Basically, guys, here's the deal. Get on Iron Podium, find the shows nearest to you, and then type in athletes near me or coaches and just sign up and do it. Do you want to wait for the say it live? But do, we, do you want right. us to say it now? So okay, we're going to tell sorry. you, but if we say it two minutes before they announce it to the uh, jam-packed arena, amphitheater, Guys, you can't you see can't it, but there are literally let them know. thousands of people here from Roanoke, Virginia. Virginia Strongman is not as big as North Carolina, but it seems like it's growing. Yes, I think uh, the barn's doing a lot for the it. The barn is doing so much work. The guys, uh, the, the the crew at the shop are doing work. Shout out to the gym yep. I just started training at after the Arnold Strength Haven. Cat, Corey, guys, I appreciate you so much. They basically were like. Hey, you can bring in all your crap in here if you want, yeah. bro. Which anyone that knows if you've been competing in Strongman, the one of the things that happens is you accumulate a lot of stuff. Um, so no. Strength Haven, they are a Strongman gym, but they allowed me to bring in all my stuff, and now I'm in there doing yep. my thing. So check out them, Strength Haven. I just started um, at RVA Iron, which is primarily bodybuilding and powerlifting, but day one they're like, all right, what? Can, how can we start facilitating Strongman stuff for you? And I'm yeah. like, oh. That's exciting. Yeah. So. Here we go. We're done with the shout outs. You're probably yes. so tired of it. We have the hot goss. <laughs> we're going to spill the tea. Let's see if there's oh, anything. We're reading the comments. We're going to. Uh... Chaos doesn't want to see the stone event anymore. <laughs> I mean, so the athlete. Thank you, Athlete Aaron. Cody is saying this. It looks like the equivalent. I'm old. So if anyone played the game Final Fight in the 90s on Super Nintendo, there was a part where you got to beat a car <laughs> with a 2x4. That event, the athlete's the car, and the event is the 2x4. So, uh, but then spectator, commentator, not athlete Cody, I kind of like it because I don't I have to do it. I love it. I love watching evil things I don't want to do. Yeah. If I never have to do I'm that sick. event and I never have to do a max carry for distance... I'll be a fan. But when you see a promoter come up with like a new or like they bring back something that hasn't been used in years and you're like, oh, that's evil. I'm glad I'm not doing it. Then you're like, wait, I hope nobody else thinks, yay, I like this evil and puts it in a show I'm doing. Yeah. All right, guys. We're going to give you guys the results from 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 10th to 1st. And I, we're, oh. I don't know if you want to. You're not going to be able to hear Abby. We can try and right. say it at the same time as they walk out. All right, Chandler Cottle came in tenth place, guys. We're just going to announce it in tandem with the live, the live crew. That's what we're going to do. Do we want total points? So Josh got fourteen points at ninth. So we got Langlois and Cottle, two of the smaller, younger guys, who definitely held. I'm sorry. Jacob McBride, eighth place with 17 points. What was that? Oh, look. Oh. All right, in seventh place with 25 Cody points. threw me off. We have Mark Cummins. Mark Cummins, 25 Mark points, Ashley seventh place. Point yeah, my, my oh, point a tie. about the last two is that they held their own all day. 
CJ. Oh. So we have a tie at six and fifth. So they had to do count backs. All right. In fifth place. With a fifth place. Oh. I see. All right, that's Pierre, 32 points. Count back goes to him on that, or goes to Ben, rather. You have to say it with excitement. They can't hear Abby's excitement. Ben Donan in fourth place due to the tie break. I need more energy for the last three. 32 points. All right, we're moving on to the podium, boys. All right, here's the podium. Third place. 34 points. Keith Cherry, 34 points on the podium. Holy smack. This dude just All came right. out of nowhere with this. Yep. Right. Actually, the whole podium, aside yeah. from the very, next one, I think. Very, very exciting finish and close call at the end. In second place with 40 points, well ahead of the rest. 40 points for. 40 points in second place, Nick O'Hare. This dude does not let one bad event ever set him back. It's incredible. All right, guys. Jim Mitchell, first place. 41 points, guys. I apologize for Cody's lack of energy. I think he's relying on the fact that Abby's giving all the energy I'm to the amphitheater to right in. now. I'm trying to relay info as it's announced live. I'm sorry, guys. But come on, guys. Were you were you surprised by this podium? I mean, this yeah. is just this leaderboard shift all day yeah. was so awesome. That's what true athletes do. Yep. A lot of dude wipes because they are sweaty and dirty and gross. They have, what, dude wipes, first form. I think some Jim shirts, just earned some himself a really there cool gym bag. There are cash prizes. What the cash prizes are, we don't know. But uh, this is a pro show, meaning the guys on the podium are getting cash prizes. Yes. We're back. Guys, sorry, now my energy's back. I'm not having to relay info. You just watched Pro Strongman League Under 90 Kilo Pro Show. We want to thank you guys for tuning in. We want to thank all the sponsors. Shout out to the volunteers, the loaders, and I want to give it to all the athletes. And ADL. ADL. ADL, ADL is it. hands down the best live stream in the game. At I think the only live stream in the game, but still insanely awesome only game live in stream. Town. They're going to be streaming all the major events. They're going to be doing it. They're going to be killing it. Mm -hmm. We want to thank them for setting us up to succeed today. And they didn't bleep us out or mute us at any point, I don't Well, think. we also just did such a good job. <laughs> no, there's no need. You're such no a editing. Liar. We're just two uh, sort of washed up athletes because we're tired. Yeah, Not because well, we're actually we washed yeah. up. We're just tired. We're just going to do, we're going to be the, the morning show equivalent in Strongman. We're Should we start a podcast? Everyone's doing it. I think the it. last thing anyone <laughs> wants is another shaved head tattooed guy jammering on on a podcast. Unless we're talking about movies. I will start a movie podcast. I don't know if I can keep up with that. Well, that, that's what we'll do. What we'll do okay. is we'll have the professor and the student. <laughs> and we'll talk about these. Okay. All right. Thank guys, you guys we're closing so, it. so we much. I want to thank you guys so much. I want to thank my friend Nancy for joining and making me look way cooler and better than I am. I want to thank uh, just everybody for bringing me everybody. in. Everybody. I mean, we had Corey Butler. We had the infamous Bobby Thompson. We had just an insane volunteer staff, an insane festival. Yeah. Take care of your mental health. Take care of your fitness. Take care of your community. We love you. We thank love you so, so much. much. Bye, guys. We're going to commercial. The means to reach higher. Stronger Together is year-round programming to help you achieve a higher baseline of strength and fitness to improve your life and your off-season training. Eliminate the guesswork with your training. Stronger Together is $25 a month and includes warm-ups, strength progressions, conditioning, and uses strongman implements in every session. Operated and programmed directly by some of the most experienced strongman athletes in the world, Stronger Together is here to make you a part of the team. We are bringing Strongman to the forefront of strength and conditioning, and we believe that we are truly stronger together. The Stronger Together program bridges the gap between individualized coaching and open source quality programming. Whether your goal is